We've dueled to save the world. We've dueled to graduate high school. But that was the past. And this is the era of turbo duels. Join us as... Oh. Everything breaks. Unfortunately, what the f There we go, okay. Um, <laughs> join us as Shibuya Gato. Damn, those dual spirits got hands, I guess. Shora. My lady gets killed. <laughs> Calamity Carl. Speed counters being 6 to 11 is a little close. God fucking damn it. And Bio Roxas. I bet Carl wants that bind to time up. Huh? Use the power of the Millennium Microphone to race to the finish and discover what the 5Ds even means. Carl, did you drive a fucking motorcycle into a tower? No, I don't know what the fuck that was. That was scary. <laughs> what was that me? Whoa! <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, What's what, up? what are you thinking out at, man? <laughs> What's up, bud? What's the matter, buddy? What's the yeah, matter, boys? What is this going on? Smiley, I, did Listen, bio. I, did I know that it's your job to help this guy, but I think this is a lost cause. I did I did oh, well. well, boys, it's that time again. It's time for us to make our audience smile. <laughs> <laughs> KZ got killed on the way here. I'll take him if you don't want him. <laughs> Just like season one of Smiling Friends, Alan will be absent for this episode. <laughs> 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 it did, it, look, this was drawn before KZ said he wasn't feeling great and had to dip out. It's just very funny that he ended up being the Alan for this. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty so... brown water. <laughs> So, last episode, you'll remember that. Oh, oh, shit. Oh. Hey, KZ. Hello. Hello. Oh. I, I just wanted to set the record straight. Um, <laughs> yeah? Uh, uh, there's a clip already on the internet saying that Carl said that I don't have hair. And I wanted to set the record straight of, don't listen to this white slaver. Uh, okay, <laughs> bye. Huh? Holy okay, shit. Oh, All right, man. All right, dude. I I was hoping he'd fucking fast. comment on the fuck on the fucking things. Hey, don't worry. <laughs> no, because he said he wasn't feeling great and that he was gonna dip out for this one. I DM'd him. Hey, do you want to know what I'm assaulting our co-hosts with? Oh, and so great. He, he knew. He knew in advance. <laughs> so, so last uh, last episode, if you'll remember, I got paid to do some fucking atrocities. Here's well, the atrocities. Yeah. <laughs> It's concerning well, how good know, that um, glep actually is. I don't know if you could really say any of that. I never watched well, this Well, you can't really say that about, you know, they're, they're still people. You can't really... It's messed up, man. <laughs> well, welcome to our uh, <laughs> Smiling Friends roleplay session where we also cover five episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. Uh, that's what this is now. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, uh, but yeah, so I was working on these, and uh, I, I gotta tell you, it was really fucking difficult to choose some of these. I knew instantly, I was like, Carl's gonna be Charlie. It's fucking, it's too perfect to make a dipship's fucking Charlie. It's too yeah. good. Yeah. It's too good. Yeah, putting Charlie in the shirt uh, really did just make the difference. <laughs> and and I, I fuck, we, we already established that Uncle Bio was a free voting accident. <laughs> we already established the bio is pinned through the other art that I did. Yeah, yeah, we sure did. Which left the three of us, and man, Shibuya, I was so like, man, Shibuya would make a good glep, but Shibuya would make a good Alan too. This sucks. Yeah, now, you you sent these and said it was really difficult deciding who would be glep, and I was like, that's fair, man. There, there's no real <laughs> oh. here, that's fair, bud. Back us all. Back us all. Ultimately, I was just like, you know what? Shibuya's new little fucking character PNG tuber design on their stream uh, works better for Mr. Boss <laughs> than either of these two. So let's go with that. Yeah. What's the premise of that show? Um, it it's just a, a sitcom. You like it, Bio? It's about therapy. No. Is it actually? No, it's not. Uh, it's it's basically oh. just these these four guys who work at a place uh, called Smiling Friends get called in to try and make people smile. 
and they're not allowed to refuse a job. So it yeah, leads it's like to therapy. Semantics. That's not what what therapy exactly like to? therapy. Oh they help God. you smile and feel better. Uh, That's Shara. not the point of therapy. KZ's in chat oh, saying, if you color the lens on mine, I'm, I'm I'll going use to profile pic. <laughs> E fucking easy. I'll, I, it'll take me like two seconds and I'll just DM it to him. Don't worry. Sick. Dirty brown water. Dirty brown water. <laughs> I just wanted my cheese. I should have prepped Man, a YouTube video footage of Burnout Paradise for the PS2. <laughs> you should have. Really I'm honestly should've. like... I'm honestly like extra sad that KZ couldn't make it today because... I know for a fact that KZ would do the fucking dirty brown water bit really well. <laughs> I mean, yes, however, uh, bear in mind that uh, this is a season one episode of Smiling Friends, so Alan not being here is very normal. <laughs> oh true. yeah, no, I get it. Uh, yeah, I get it here. Uh, Welcome to our Smiling Friends cast. Honestly, that could fucking as like a side podcast or something, that could be fucking funny. It could be kind of funny, yeah. I I saw Cat uh post something on Twitter about like some rotoscope thing. And everyone was yeah. like, I think that's rotoscope, and she was like, I know what rotoscope is, shut up. <laughs> 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 it was really funny. Honestly surprising she does. That is very funny, I'm gonna be honest. I think there was like a specific technique or something that like aside from the rotoscoping that she was asking about. We're gonna we're gonna name this file KZ Alancelent. Who's playing? Wait, a landslide? Oh, shit, uh, I love Bernard. Is... <laughs> <laughs> what? No, that's awesome, man. That rules by, hey, by you want to hang out in my place and smoke some weed and fill our bellies with diet soda and play <laughs> Burnout oh. Revenge for the PlayStation 2? <laughs> Wait, I think I saw Shibuya post something about that. Uh, yeah, I posted a meme edit that was that, but Kingdom Hearts too. Yeah. <laughs> And that one blew up for no reason, even though I made it like a week after the episode aired, because I can't watch shit on time to save my life. Yeah. yeah that one went fucking crazy. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes they just pop up, uh, pop off out of nowhere. I, I, I don't control the Sometimes rate at things which just people... pop into my head. This is also true. You know what else pops off? Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! Honestly, though? I've I've sort of fucked myself here because my notes are in another tab in this window, so I have no choice but to click in and then people see my ah, notes. Well, I mean, I you like could that. just you could just drag them away to another monitor, right? Over over the OBS layout where I have to be in charge of all that shit. It's simple, That's true. You um, just need to get like a another monitor. <laughs> what, with what space? Uh, TV. <laughs> TV. That's what I do. My TV is on the other wall. Honestly, yeah. Well, a uh, long wire. You okay? So what you TV want me to do is to look at plus my plus a mouse, a mic arm. About you know, from this see? angle. This would, this would, see, this is where the mic arm comes in because then you could pull the mic around. <laughs> I have my mic arm, God. and I oh, good lord! All right. Put a mic arm on another mic arm so that you can pull that mic arm out, and then use the other side to to. Wrap Yo, I heard you love reaching, so we put some reach on your reach. Uh, <laughs> can we try that one again. Hmm. You get five days, episode 15! Uh, Fortune I mean, Cup. I, I was gonna ask how our weeks oh. have been before. Oh, yeah, you can do that. Going to do that. Uh, how, how <laughs> I forgot about that part. Yeah. I'm doing well. How, how we vibing? Great. I, get... I posted on Twitter how the last three weeks of my life have been. That's all I'll say on the matter. It's not been good. I stopped Jordan from setting an Airbnb on fire. Yeah, I do remember this. <laughs> Me and Kat are being friendly. That's I do good. not believe that at wow. all. Wow. Happy for you. Don't believe that so, for a fucking second. Why? How many drugs did it take? Huh? No, we're we're working on a we're working on something together. Huh? Are you, are you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Can't wait to see it. Um I also was on the Steam page and worked with Square Enix to play Kingdom Hearts on Steam. I did see Go buy that. Kingdom Hearts on Steam right That's now. Oh, yeah. Rub it in. Big fucking sellout. Bio Roxas. 
Listen, if Square Enix came to me and said that I could be on the Steam page for Kingdom Hearts, I'd do that shit in a heartbeat. Oh, this is a any sellout I fully to, understand. Yeah, if, if any company came up to me like, hey, play our game, we'll put you on this website, I'd be like, yeah, 100% right right now. Fucking mood. I'll mm -hmm. do it for nothing. Mm-hmm. Literally, I, I would buy my own copy of the game and I would just go, yeah, please. I'm, I'm begging. <laughs> I fucking... I fucking applied basically to do that for fucking little kitty big city, knowing full damn well that they hey, wouldn't Square fucking Enix. send me a code. Square Enix, if y'all want to sponsor a little podcast, spread spread a word about some of your games, you know. <laughs> hey, Square Enix, if you uh, if you want people who are enthusiastic to talk about Kingdom Hearts every single day of their lives, hi, I've been hyperfixated since I was twelve. Please, <laughs> I beg you. It's actually a good time to try to get on their radar because they just uh, changed out the influencer relations department. So they're oh they're having to wow. refresh and get new lists together. Interesting. Okay. So, Why are you so small, dude? Oh Go back god, to your family, bro. Shora. Huh? A, a really yeah. good idea just came up in chat. What? What? Oh no. Bridget is the fifth podcast member. See, it's funny. Because I was thinking about going a little extra last night and doing our fucking like like all of our guests as characters as well. So I was yeah, sitting Bridget, there like, it's easy. You make Bridget Smormu. Yeah. Who? Actually, I'm with her. <laughs> no, I wasn't gonna make Bridget Smormu. <laughs> this cannot be undone. <laughs> I was going to make Bridget a really, really long necked shrimp. Can everyone shrimp. read that just fine? Can everyone that uh, read this worse. just fine? Because I need you all to understand that I like. That didn't happen! No, this did. This did happen. I have multiple sources. That didn't happen. I have multiple sources corroborating. Uh, I'm going to cry. Oof. I'm going to do a braiding circle with Bio, and he forgot he was supposed to record a podcast the day before adding it wait. for extreme. Wait, 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 wait. That's our vial. Oh, this didn't happen? Yes. Then why is Dylan, who's in the fucking server, corroborating? <laughs> Dylan's not on my server. Well, Dylan a has likely screenshots. Story. Not anymore. A <laughs> <Huh>? likely st <laughs> Wow. Um, did you, no, 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 did you no, no. Okay, so at 3.18 p.m. today. Yeah. Okay, there it is. There it is. I said, yeah. I said, wait, I'm on a podcast. I can't do it anything. We can still go. I just won't be in voice. So you're saying that you can still raid during content. Bio always <laughs> okay, okay. lying. Hear me out. SMH. I did a podcast with you guys and I cleared the Omega protocol. Okay. That's like that's like 12 out of 10 level difficulty, right? And EX trial is like a one out of ten. I so can are, do that sleeping. Are you admitting to doing multiple I raids on content? Cannot believe yeah. that you would do this, Bioroxis. <clears throat> right I, now, though, you I'm, foul right now, right villain, now, I, you evil, evil, disgusting creature, Bioroxis, playing games during the podcast. Right now, you are truly right vile. now. If you look at my screen, I'm just, I'm just mining. I'm just mining my own business. It's a, that's a crafter gatherer joke because I'm a miner. A mining you know my own. Oh. A miner of rocks. A miner of rocks. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you. In minerals. I'm glad you got onto that quick. Because I was about to be like, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't employ people under 18 here. I think that goes against some kind of law. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to rib a little bit on that uh, <laughs> before we started. Because <laughs> oh, I want shit. you to know so I had funny. a heart attack hearing this. From secondary no. sources. <laughs> yeah, freaking but, uh, neon. We're good. We're Hold beyond on. gooch. Hold on, what's this? Hey, hey Shibuya, Ooh. can you can you do me like a tiny favor, by the way? Oh, up? Yeah, yeah. Because oh, uh, I don't think anybody on the Twitch can fucking notice this, but just like increase the size of Carl for a bit and look at his, look at his shoulder. Okay. Oh, oh. What did you do? What did you do to him? <laughs> oh. oh my god! Whoa! Like a, like a tumor! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> oh god! For people who can't I have see it seen yet. the end of days. <laughs> I've seen the date of oh. your death. Hold on. I, I need to make I was wondering bigger. if you were ever going to notice it, and I was like, you know what? No, I'm just going to pull the wool out. I'm just. Oh god, I keep trying to. Bigger, and I can't. Oh, hold on. Let me, I, let me I intended to be in here. Ugh. I used to go here all the time when I was a young brogmunculus. 
I intended for fucking for it to just be on his shoulder, but everybody's assuming it's like a growth. So you know what? Fuck it. It's, it's a growth now. Yeah, for those who can't see, that's Ooh. there. And now I'm not going to be able to unsee it for the entire rest of the episode. Thank you, Shora. That's he's awesome. Grow he's growing out of your fucking neck. All right. Um, Daddy. Awful. Hate that. Yeah, Lyle. Daddy. Please don't. Gonna, I uh, what is that one? Was that uh, really off parents? Where the guy had like the boil that was alive or something? I yeah. think so. That was so weird. Yeah, it was. Sometimes I look back on those shows and I'm like, what? I look what back on doing? those shows and I think, thank God I ended up relatively normal, even though right? I watched this <laughs> shit on the regular. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus Christ. And now I see where all these, these kinks come from. I, I watched... Uh, I, I watched the block of Cartoon Network that aired uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX as a kid. And that block also include, uh. included shit like Totally Spies and Martin Mystery, so it's a wonder that I ended up in <laughs> uh, <laughs> But it also had Kobe Oko, which rules, so there's that. Explains totally Spies is such a... Totally Spies is such a weird show to go back to. Hey, guess what? Oh There's God. a new season of it airing yeah, right now, and they have not changed. It's still the same old show. Uh, uh -huh. No, I'm not watching. No. I could have lived my entire life not knowing that it came back. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, I uh, hate to break it to you boys, but uh, our job this week is to uh, make Clover from Totally Spies smile. <laughs> you can't refuse. Oh, sweet. I've always been waiting for this job. I wasn't expecting that one. Either. That freaked me out. It startled me. God. Man. All right. Uh, I, I think that's enough uh, Burnout Revenge on the PS2. As funny as the bit is, I do have to look at my notes eventually. <laughs> that's like, of our I was like the subway surfer of our show. A little bit, yeah. Welcome to the Fortune Cup, everybody. Hello, and welcome to the Fortune Cup. This sure is... Uh, a first season tournament, but that's fine because somehow it's still enjoyable. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I didn't love, have an issue with this. Yeah, I love that the sub cold opens on Leah wearing lipstick. Yeah, it's great. I think that they cut Leah wearing lipstick out of the fucking dub hey, entirely. Hey, buddy, no, they did not. Did they not? Uh, did yeah. I just like? fucking gloss over it well, that's no great. they didn't gloss over it it's because like they play it up as oh he needs to look like his sister so it's fine and it's totally not a kid cross-dressing uh so they just have a, a bunch of dialogue where it's it's just leo trying to act a certain way and luna getting on his case because i don't fucking act like that relax <laughs> calm down don't don't fucking make me look bad uh and then he proceeds to make her look like shit but i'm getting <laughs> a little ahead of myself here uh <clears throat> Episode 15. I love it! Yeah. Also, just titled, Welcome to the Fortune Cup. Yeah. You know, pretty simple title. I respect Well, that. you know, except in the sub where it's, uh, <clears throat> Duel of Fortune Cup begins. Major air raid, two exclamation points. Giant Major bomber air, air raid. What? No, you're joking. Well, no, yeah. That's the some, full subtitle. Some of the guy's cards are themed around that, so that's <laughs> not shocking. It's shocking for me. Anyways. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright. So, um while while Dip proceeds to ruin shit's uh entire image that she has uh crafted by being somewhat good at card games. Be nice, they're kids. I can call kids dip you and just shit. Said that? Did, did Carl who is this? Is that Carl? <laughs> did he just protect a child? Hello? Affectional. I child. like these children. Huh? They're actually like doing Please shit. Please get away from. <laughs> Sorry. Hold on, hold on. I can make I can make this happen. Hold on. All right. I'll give you a little space, man. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, you're gonna be covered up by some of the edits. Well, you should be seeing but... that out loud. Actually, you know what? You know what? No. Huh. I, I I tried to have you stand on the text to make you feel a little taller, <laughs> but that's not gonna work. I'm sorry, bud. No. There we go. That's okay. <laughs> get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Get a milk carton fire to stand on. Actually, hold on. 
Since, since I'm just here <laughs> fucking with the layout, uh, let me. <laughs> oh man. But I feel off. like this could be funny. There we go. <laughs> Speaking of liking to feel tall. God. <laughs> Fuck, you know what I should have done? Huh? I should have made a specific second fucking, like, <laughs> second fucking sprite for myself of me in the fucking beanbag chair so that every time I talk, I'm just, or every time I'm not talking, I'm just in the beanbag. Oh my god. Hell yeah. It would have been so good. Fuck. That, that would have been very funny, but that is a lot of extra work, to be fair. So, I don't blame you. Hey guys, what is your favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds track? Mine is the fucking Fall Guys music that plays before they start a duel. <laughs> God. That's awesome. Every time I'm just like, where are the beans going? <laughs> what a time. Oh boy. So so the episode starts with us with fucking It starts with with basically Leo pretending to be Luna a little bit, I guess, and definitely failing. Yep. Yep. And then we get the, the then we get the fucking, you know, the cool ass opening where the fucking Red Dragon Archfiend just shows up and flies over the stadium. Yeah, them just having Red Dragon Archfiend like as a mascot flying around is sick as hell. I'm stunned it took us until 5Ds to actually have this. This feels like something that Kaiba should have done in the Casey Grand Prix, but you know, Casey Grand Prix is shit filler, so. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I hope we never get God. filler like that again. I'm praying. I, I'm so glad I wasn't the only one who was like, man, this this feels like a good version of the Casey Grand Prix. No, it absolutely does. And, like, it's happening season one of this show. So even if it gets bad, we're out of there relatively quick. So I'm not complaining. Yeah. So... Uh, we, we get to see the other contestants for, for this fucking tournament, which include um, <clears throat> mm -hmm. guy in a basic as fuck weird gray outfit. We don't know who the fuck he is. Um, big tan dude wearing like, I, I don't even know what the fuck to call that beyond like weird ass like assault vest bondage gear. Kinda, yeah. Uh, you know, you say... Uh, "Quote unquote Luna, mm -hmm. asshole in a robe, asshole in a member. monk's outfit, Akiza, and a dude in a full ass suit of armor." <laughs> That's funny. I forgot about this dude just in the fucking full ass armor and his whole "I'm gonna speak in ye old English" bit. We'll get to and... him because I have my issues with this man. Oh my god. We're gonna fucking Shibuya. get to that guy. What's up? I, I know we don't fucking... We, we, we try not to look at chat, but like, holy shit. Thank you, Power Proto Man, for this phenomenal fucking quick end. Hold on. Hold on, because I... I if, if I click it, it opens it in a new window where I'm not logged in, so I can't actually do anything with it. Thanks, OBS. Um, oh, that's good. I'm retweeting that. All right. That's a good one. I was just wondering if you wanted us to smoke weed, fill our bellies with diet soda, and watch Millennium Microphone on Twitch.tv. Delightful. Should I watch that show? Would I, would I laugh at that show? Oh, uh, you might. I think you might. You'd probably find at least a few bits funny. And if anything, at least, if you can appreciate good animation, you'd like that. Yeah. Mm. Oh, okay, fuck you. Anyway. <laughs> what the fuck? Wow. Okay. Nah. No, I hate animators. I think they should die by a rock system. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, all right. Fucked off. Well, that's unfortunate for the animators out there, but uh, we have the voice actors out there, like Sean fucking Shamel. I want you what? to know that the Shamel counter is alive and well in this episode and this episode specifically. Uh, Playing the dude in the armor, by the way. Frame one, he's the announcer. No, the dude in the Wait, armor really? is Eric Stewart, the voice of Kaiba. Oh, um, right. No, Sorry, I was getting my names mixed he's, up. He is playing the dude in the weird assault vest getup. I thought he sounded Shit, like Goku. he is. Yes, Sean Schemmel is Goku's voice actor. Real? Oh. Yeah. So he was all over GX's dub, and he's not as. Wait, I thought the person that voiced Goku one. was like a girl. In Japanese, yes, that's Masako Nozawa. Maybe I'm thinking of Naruto. Yeah. Believe it. Yeah, Naruto is voiced by a woman. 
Yeah. Um, so as, as the contestants all get revealed to the stadium, immediately people peg you say's fucking criminal. Huh? Oh, wait, 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 go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, because I made this edit. You oh, made an thought... edit? Holy shit! <laughs> Holy shit. Because when I heard the announcer, I was like... <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. It's pretty good. I'm glad the Shemmel counter is not only alive and well in our hearts, it's alive and well in our brains to the point where we need to make an edit for it. Let's fucking go. That's Bionic. really good. <laughs> the only way this edit would be better is if you'd managed to just get Goku's face on and keep the pompadour. No, but this honestly, is a really good honestly, edit. this so Goku them. face is kind of killing it. This is really good. This is a fantastic one. Yeah. That's pretty strong. Uh, <laughs> immediately people notice fucking Yusei's criminal mark and they start throwing out slurs against him. Yeah. Yeah, they sure do. I literally said in my notes, I was like, the second someone is on the front stage, the racism comes out from the crowd. Uh-huh. <laughs> but but it's okay. Saw. It's okay. Uh, Griger, the, the fucker who in the, in the assault bondage gear, Griger, known as Bomber in the Japanese, by the way. As if we needed to be <laughs> subtle. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, he he steps up uh, and he 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 gives a little speech. He's like, oh, "Fuck you, people. He's a duelist. It'll be okay. You don't know what he did." I killed at least three men. Thank you for defending me. Whoa. It's okay. As long as you have cards, you are a duelist. Therefore, you will be respected. I, Therefore, I do, you are good. I do like that. Bro walks up to the mic and goes. Why are you judging him? This man has done nothing to make me judge him yet. Judge him on his actions, not on his existence, you assholes. Yeah. Honestly, and then Rex Goodwin spent. gives the most... <laughs> and then Rex gives the most, like, stilted clapping I've ever seen in my life. Two uh -huh. whole frames of fucking animation. Surely this man is not evil in any way, shape, or form. With a clap like that, he's gotta be a good guy. Right? <laughs> Right. Surely. Well. Congratulations. Jeff, congratulations. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised then, if 5Ds has a season that ends on like an Ava style congratulations moment. <laughs> God. Uh and, and then we get to figure out who's gonna be first in the fucking tournament. And it turns out that it's gonna be Leo versus Greiger. Surely this can't go wrong. Clearly. Yeah. Surely nothing will go poorly here, uh, because they, <laughs> L Lazar and, um, and Goodwin are in the back constantly calling up the scientist, who's also voiced by Sean Zig Zix. Zig Zix. I always forget his fucking <laughs> You will, you will say it, they say it like 70 times this week. Okay. Fucking Zig Zix. Every time I hear his name, I want to kill him. So... Our third Shemmel, who has hit the episode, uh, talks to them and says that the duelists need to be put under pressure to reveal whether or not they have the mark of the signer. So, uh, Bro is cooking something- We're going to scan them for their NRD. Bro is cooking something foul over at his headquarters, but in the meantime, we have duels to deal with, uh, and we have children that we have to traumatize. Surely this will not come back later. Uh, Yay! <laughs> so... Yeah! I love traumatizing kids! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, Leo's out here dressed up as his sister, being the most embarrassing guy possible. Uh, d just, I, I want to bring attention to an image on the wiki, uh, in particular because this is actually. <laughs> I know exactly me. which one. Um, this is on the wiki under with the uh, with the caption underneath it. Leo acts feminine. Great. Very funny. <laughs> Which, you know, these kids are what, like 11 at maybe 12 at the oldest? Probably only like 10. Um, and I'm just thinking to myself. I think they said they're 11. If, if they did, I missed it. It's fine. Um, it seems insane to me that we can't just, you know, let let a kid be kind kind of tomboyish. We we have to explicitly be like, no, I'm I'm dressed up like my sister because no, no one would believe I'm her otherwise. Like, d bro, just chill. You're trying too hard. You're outing yourself here. 
He's, I would say he's trying his best, but he's, he's really, really not. not. <laughs> he's really not. Absolutely not. I any time that the professor dude, whatever his name is, shows up on screen, the big nose fucker, and he just starts shouting momentum. I just my heart is Wait, filled does with he joy. Have a big nose, or does he only fuck people that have big noses? Aww. Yeah. He said the big nose fucker. Christ. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, you know what? I'll, give, the, I'll give that one to you. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Um, Leo, <laughs> Leo and Gregor no, shake good. hands. Um, Gregor says that Leo has a pretty strong grip for a girl. Uh, and Leo fumbles the recovery so hard, it's pathetic. It's, it's actually bad. Uh, but it's fine because it, the time to talk is over. It's time to fucking duel. Uh, so, and I'm shocked that this wasn't an issue because I feel like for a tournament like this, you would have had to register your deck in advance. Uh, they just let Leo duel with his Morphtronics. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they just let this kid go out with his own deck when I. I, I mean, it's not like the deck is. It's not like the deck's tied to him. <laughs> For all, for all they know, they could just fucking Luna could just be like, "Yeah, I'm borrowing your Morphtronics." I'm sorry, Shora, but in in the world of the Yu-Gi-Oh anime, where everybody picks a deck archetype and kind of sticks with it for the rest of their lives, uh, only making <laughs> small alterations here and there to add support. Now, <laughs> counterpoint. Fuck so you, this isn't yes. this isn't like the real world where you have to like have a judge verify the contents of your deck. When you're at an official tournament, they just sort of see you have cards and go, all right, you can go in. Yeah, which... And then play kind of a little hard out. It just seems insane to me, but sure. For the sake of plot, we'll allow it. Um, the, so... We get, uh, we get a pretty strong first turn from Bomber over here. Uh, surely that, that's not uh, foreshadowing anything, that his name is Bomber. Uh, and there's there's nothing at all uh, bad about naming your your first you know darker skin tone character this by the what? way yeah yeah first oh. one in five D <laughs> what do you have a problem with bomber the black storm is that that's his full title I gotta go I gotta of course go it here. is of Jesus course it is Christ. so Jesus I was like all, all right guys oh. So, Bro drops a uh, summon reactor on his first turn, which immediately kind of counterplays the Morphtronic deck that Leo is running, because any time a monster is summoned, it gets to inflict direct damage. Oh, I get child. it. Summon reactor, because it reacts when your opponent summons. When your opponent summons a monster, its effect reacts to that. It's a summon reactor. Yeah. Reacting when your opponent would summon a monster. A summon re. <laughs> I was about to serve mute you if you didn't cut the bed off in a bit. <laughs> so good, good call. Uh, <laughs> so don't worry. That's how exactly yeah. how it's written in my notes. Okay, perfect. Uh, <laughs> bro drops that. Uh, Leo tries to start his combos because he really likes the one combo and the motherfucking infinite he can do. Um, and then gets punished for it because, as we have learned, this child cannot adapt to changes in a duel. He has one play that he knows, and he really wants to do it. Actually, me for real, though. Honestly, that's, <laughs> that's fair. So true. When your deck has a really good play, Move. you just want to get that play off. I understand. That's why I keep losing with my Snake Eyes deck. I just keep going for one play, and when someone fucks it up, I go, well, uh, I don't know what I'm doing now. No. <laughs> Time to fold. <laughs> it's like, well, shit. Uh, I got 36 more cards in this deck, but you've ruined the only four that matter. GG. It's not entirely true. I've played around <laughs> a couple things. It's just hard to play around cross-out designator every time. Nibiru. I hate modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm still building three other decks. <laughs> oh, man. Um, next turn, uh, Griger, because I'm not calling him Bomber, Jesus Christ. Um, Gregor ends up normal summoning a trap reactor on top of his summon reactor. 
curious. Oh, it's a trap reactor. It reacts to trap cards. Uh -huh. When your opponent activates a trap card, its effect reacts to it, making it a trap re. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now the wonderful thing that you is, muted. <laughs> I no. didn't do that. No, I didn't do that awesome. one. That's funny. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> In response to this, Leo ends up dropping a trap card called Morph Transition, congrats king, or should I say queen, uh, to try and save his his only monster on the field. Um, but then Trap Reactor takes another 800 life points, you know, as you do. It's a little fucked up, but uh, that's how it goes. Um, the kid's able to negate some attacks, uh, but uh, dude has... No, that's later. Um, the guy's got a pretty good uh, strategy of, of just reacting to his opponent's plays. Um, and meanwhile, the kid is just like, no, I need some more of my goons. I, I need to fucking get him on this field <laughs> right now, please. Um, I want my funny robots out now. So he to be keeps... fair, that's just kind of how Morphtronics work, yeah. unfortunately. They're not a good deck. Uh, no, not at all. I respect him for trying, though. Uh, he keeps trying to use the effect of the cell phone to, uh, after he's looked at the top few cards of his deck to try and get one out on special summon. He manages it, uh, summoning Morphtronic Datatron, who, you know, uh, may have been changed to be a lighter. Yep. Uh, because, you know... Uh, I, I I think what it is is in Japanese he's a lighter and then in English yep. in the TCG only he's a USB. Yep, exactly what cute. it is. It's it it's cute, but it's very funny when they call him Datatron and he is very clearly a fucking lighter. <laughs> That's what everyone thought when it came out too. They were like, Well it looks more like a zippo than a USB. Yeah. And then the TCG are dropped in is like, Oh I You get can see it. the uh you can see in the OCG artwork, it just... Hold on, I'll get a picture of both of them. Yeah, I would appreciate that. Uh, here he is with his funny little lighter bit. And then here he is in the TCG where they just scrubbed that out. Closed it up. Oh, fuck, they sealed him. Hold on. Oh, wait, I can get the actual just artwork picture. All right, perfect. The fact that he's only two gigs, that's fucked up, bro. There's the original. And there is the English version. I uh, didn't even notice they slapped two gigs on him. That's he's only foul. two gigs. That's, That's vile. Foul. Uh, actually, how many... What level is he as a for monster? The, for the level? time, that probably would have been good. He's level three. Why not three gigs then, huh? Fucked I thought, up. I thought the two gigs might have meaning, but no, you just made him shit. <laughs> yeah, at, at the time that 5Ds came out, two gigs was probably a lot. No, I don't think it was a lot. This would have been I like mean, for like a hand drive. Nine. I think by then I was using no less than like eight for school projects. So I don't know. Okay. My favorite thing about this episode is how this is the first and probably only time in history someone has meaningfully summoned Flying Fortress Skyfire. God. One of the worst cards to exist. Oh, now that you're saying that, I, I need like to know. When the kid, I like when you, the kid's fighting and the guy's like, uh, something, 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 I'm gonna impress, or you better impress me. And he's like, I'm gonna impress <laughs> your you face. I gonna say something God. so much different. What? Jesus Christ. Huh? What's the matter, man? You just you just stopped at impress, and I was like, huh? What? <laughs> impress? <laughs> Hope this fucking guy wasn't gonna say something like that to this kid. Huh? I I oh? don't know, man. Uh, okay. Shut up, okay. Flying hey, Fortress Shibuya, I did Skyfire. Oh. I did something stupid. Uh, it's it's yeah. <laughs> I realized it would take me all of like two minutes to do a, a quick version, so. Yeah, it's. Awesome, dude. All right, give me a second while I uh, while I get this together. I'm excited. So, man, chat. You guys fucking... remember pregnant it shows? Huh? What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I. God Almighty. <laughs> 
this just in. Bioroxis has apparently been pregnant. <laughs> I'm just going to do that for Ooh. a minute. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Down here. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> if it sounds like I'm stunned, uh, I am. Don't worry. Don't, don't you oh, fucking worry. Oh, we all are. Worry. Don't worry. Uh... <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> you're Mr. Glenn. Yeah, all right, yeah. all right, that's the one. That's phenomenal. All right, bye. You're allowed to come back out if you don't. Thank you. Threaten our audience with the <laughs> the <burden of> pregnancy <laughs> anymore. <laughs> uh. All right, hold on. Yeah. Sorry, can you talk for a minute? E papa zo, bo papa zi, zi papa do. Okay, that's perfect. I'll I'll leave well, it. Wait, be... Good shit. All right. Oh man. Pajama to bow. He's so tired from being on my head. He needs to nap. <laughs> Dude, Leo fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah, Leo. Leo just kind of made yeah, shit for real. throughout this entire duel, and it. I I feel a little bad. But, you know, uh, shouldn't have been playing Morphtronics, I guess. <laughs> Play a better deck, idiot! <laughs> oh, man. And, uh, I was impressed a little bit when you did a fucking, like, lock where you just had the magnets out and your opponent couldn't attack, and then they got immediately just snapped. Yeah. yeah, that was actually a good play. Like, Leo's first fucking duel in this series was actually pretty good, and now, it, and now he just fucking shat the bed. Well, the reason is that his first duel is meant to illustrate that he's competent and he knows what he's doing with his Morphtronics. The problem is he doesn't want to ever adapt to that strategy. Uh, he just wants to do his silly, funny little combo. And I get it. Silly, funny little combo, good. Uh, until you get your shit kicked in because you didn't draw the things to make your silly, funny combo. Point is, the kid needs to adapt. And he's not, he's not fucking doing that. But, uh, throughout this duel, uh, what was it, Zigzix? I think this kid should be dropkicked. Yeah, uh, fucking Ziggy Stardust or whatever. There is Carl. Yeah. Yeah, he's been here nice the whole bud. time. Um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's, a disorder. Smile. <clears throat> what? there's a disorder. Um, like a mental health disorder where you start to believe that the people around you have been replaced by other people. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. What does it have to do with this, bud? I... <laughs> where the fuck did this come from? Where did this one come from? Because. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> All right. I don't know what you mean there, buddy. It's me, Shibuya Gato. I'm Zach Cable. Eat me balls. Um. So Zigzix throughout this entire duel is cranking up the power on whatever machine he's got, trying to uh, draw out the dormant, uh, the the dormant signer energy or whatever the fuck. Was that because like they're trying to like use like twin telepathy and that's why she's reacting? Uh, no, she's. No. I I think it's that she's reacting specifically because um the signals being put out. Yeah. But then why isn't you say being affected? Because he's not in the arena. He, he's, uh, yeah, he's um, he's like downstairs or whatever. He's just watching on a TV. He's sitting down he there also... on a couch, going, "Well, this kid fucking sucks." <laughs> You'll also see in a in a in a bit, fucking like I don't remember which episode is it is exactly, but one of the episodes he does get affected a little bit because he starts grabbing his fucking arm. Well, yep. you can fuck a dog. Oh. So they, they keep Go trying to, to push this oh. kid to uh, show off the mark uh, because these are the dual assassins that Goodwin was assembling in the last batch of episodes. Uh, God, I miss when we had shit like dual assassins. We're so fucking back. Um, We're so right. back! I, I really disliked that they gave... Um, oh God, what the fuck is uh, his... Greiger uh, a fucking, like evil fucked up Dormammu aura that appears to torment this child that he's just bullied on a public stage. Yeah. I kind of hated that. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> it kind of sucked real bad. 
I I don't remember exactly how this season goes, but I have a I have a weird feeling that this is going to be one of those character archetypes where they go like, yeah, he's working for the evil people, but he'll turn out to be a good guy later, or at least he'll be one of the more respectable ones. Given how he defended Yusei initially, um, I'd like to think he's at least, you know, somewhat redeemable in the future, but for now, he's still bullied a fucking child until they, well, like, you know, almost passed paycheck, out. Paycheck, dude. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was there. Listen, $50, $50. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> don't act like you don't do the same thing on Master Duel. I'm not going to say that. Never fucking mind. Uh- <laughs> 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 That's my favorite, favorite vocal stim now. The, the the cat thing that goes, huh? Huh? Yeah, I love it. Good one. It's, it's so, so good. Hold on. For, for people- love it. For people who are not aware, let me just grab that shit. <laughs> Thank you. I was about to. If, if nobody else did, uh, I had a favorite. Oh fuck! It's so good. So funny. Vocal stims are such a dangerous thing. Oh yeah. Fucked up. I was washing my hands before, and I just out loud said to myself, "Trying to strike a chord, and it's probably a minor." Because I can even think about that Kendrick song. <laughs> Jesus, that's a really bad that one beef for you. It's just the funniest shit. <laughs> oh god, that song is so fucking funny. Hey, did unrelated to Yu Gi Oh for a minute? Did you see that Pharrell Pharrell Williams did a track for Despicable Me Four and put lyrics referencing the Kendrick Drake beef into the Despicable <laughs> Holy Me Four? Shit. <laughs> Hold on, oh, that's so Hold good. On. What? Oh, I love Pharrell. He's one of the funniest people alive. <laughs> hold on. Um, hold on. If I can find this again, I need to actually uh, share it because it's insane. It is just genuinely so fucked. Oh. oh, sorry. I just saw a play set of Griggle on my timeline. Huh? What? I didn't. You know, Griggle. No, I don't know. Yeah, the, the fucking ancient oh, Yu-Gi-Oh monster. Griggle. Yeah, you know okay. Griggle. Oh, what about it? I've, oh, it's... I've only ever seen this thing in GBA quality. I never noticed it has a gross fucking eye and mouth. This is a lot to process. Yeah, it's an awful actually. little creature. Oh, wow. God, yeah. No, I knew about the mouth. I didn't know about the eye. Ew. That's what fucking eye? Fucked up. Oh, no. I never noticed the <laughs> eye. <laughs> oh. All right. So, for for our like viewers boots. and uh, the VOD watchers and audience at home, hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show off Griggle. So, at first, you look at this and you go, oh, that's a funny little guy. He's got big boots and he's got the, the, the green hair. Looks that's like also Astro plain. Boy boots. He's got his little lips. He's, he's a little goofy. He's got the little, like, slicked up bit of hair in the front. And you go, oh, God, what is that? Oh, what horrors. is that? Oh, my God. What the fuck is that? Probably just a cute little guy with the other bit of hair. That's probably what he sounds like. Mm. Okay, actually, I don't like that that. that someone in the chat said gooch mouth. Oh, (laughs) oh, (laughs) let's 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 get away from this. Let's move on. This is why I try not to address chat during because chat will say the most heinous shit to get attention. (laughs) You know that thing does have a broad like quality to it, but you know what I was going to say, Shibuya. Yeah. Zoom out of this thing for a minute. Yeah, yeah, I have to. Do you, you know what this weirdly fucking reminds me of? Yeah. I look at this thing and I go, why does this thing look like some fucked up, like, Mineta-esque fucking My Hero creature? <laughs> why would... Okay. <laughs> just I love My Hero. I, just because Griggle's got a little goofy little mouth and a gross little eye does not mean you have Don't to compare him to sexual- Don't you fucking pretend that that thing doesn't look like a sexual predator. No, I was Aww. gonna say you don't have to compare him to sexual predator <laughs> Mineta from My Hero. What? Uh, Griggle looks like he Bio, would walk under not... someone's skirt and just be like- Bio, how, uh, yeah. how, how far are you in My Hero? 
Uh, the last one I watched was when the guy comes back and he cries in the rain. Okay, so that's you, not very specific. You know, and it's very specific. You know the gross uh, you know purple the boy hair? who chases every woman he sees. Yes, I hate that guy. That is who Shora is comparing Griggle oh, to. Yeah. That's me, yeah. Netta. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I hate <laughs> that's like the worst part of my hero is everything else yeah. is great and they try to like. I don't know, push him in, and it's the stupidest shit ever. Yeah, you know yeah. why? Oh, because worry. he's uh, the author's favorite character as well. Of course he is. He's he's a gag character for the series who genuinely, like, is barely there half the time. I wish he was never there any yeah. of the time. Oh no, trust me. Trust me. I fucking feel that. Yeah. <clears throat> All my homies wish Minetta would just die. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I wish Minetta would spontaneously combust uh, due to all the girl power in the room. Like, ev every woman uh, wished him dead hard enough that they manifested it into existence, and then everyone let them off uh, because, you know, it's Minetta. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be nice. Uh, so, Leo, Leo Leo tries to get this fucking, like, all of his all of his shit going. Manages to kind of duel for a, for a minute. Fails. And then we get Flying Fortress Skyfire. Which, like, that shit's kind of cool. Uh, I did look up Flying Fortress Skyfire to see if it was any good. Uh, so you have to use Summon Reactor SK to get it on the field. Once per turn, send a card from your hand to the graveyard to destroy a card your opponent controls. Once during each of your opponent's turns, you can either... Uh, destroy a normal or special summoned monster and deal 800 damage, or... Destroy a set monster and deal 800. Yeah, this is so, just mid. So, Shavu, you've looked up the card, so you're you're exempt from this. Okay. Now, Bio, uh, Carl? Yeah? Flying Fortress Skyfire. Mm -hmm. What attribute is this monster? <laughs> Earth. Yeah. Fire. You're both wrong. Damn it's it. a wind monster. <laughs> oh, yeah, because it's a, plane. it's that a makes sense. flying fortress. Yeah. Yeah. It's got... Fire in the name. He's, he's well, yeah, on it's the a wind, plane, though. though. Uh, so he's an and, yet Black, and yet, Black Rose Dragon is a fire <laughs> attribute monster. Yeah, yeah which it's is a insane fire dragon. I think they're just kind of arbitrary about the attributes in, in Yu Gi Oh! half the time. Yes. Because no. Black, Black Rose could have easily been like a dark type, an earth type. No. Fire. Funny. They had to do it so years later they could use it in Ten Yi and or not Ten Yi, fucking Ten Pi, and just bring it out in battle phase and wipe everything off the fucking field. That's kind of awesome, actually. Because they fucking hate us. <laughs> <sighs> uh. So anyway, Leo gets uh, Leo gets shot and. Uh, yeah, he's just laying yeah. dead there on the ground at the end of episode fifteen. It's fucked up. It was it was fucking great. This this will have no effect on Luna going forward. Uh, episode sixteen. Episode sixteen. <laughs> this is the bitch no one can be normal about on Twitter dot com. Wife, 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 wife. Yeah. Uh, and appropriately, wife. she gets the best fucking oh, episodes of the set. Lady? Yes, th this is Black yeah. Rose Dragon Lady. She's so fucking cool. <laughs> Her name is Akiza. Cool. She is very cool. I hate that the internet has ruined her for me because the only people I see with Akiza profile pictures are fucking psychos. She's so fucking cool. She is. You very say cool. that, and I know that the minute Bridget comes on for a guest spot on this on this season, Bridget or Bridget or die would immediately go Akiza. <laughs> okay, no, I know they're That's normal the new because art. I, I know they're normal because I've met them and I know them, but there are too many people on the internet with bad and weird takes. That I've seen who are not normal about Akiza. No, Bridget's got to be. Uh, Bridget's got to be Rally. No, <laughs> no, she doesn't. You don't. Bridget's got to be Rally with a very long neck. Oh, is it because her hair is orange? Yeah. <laughs> Christ. You know what? You're right. If Yuki ever comes on, y Yuki can be Akiza. That'd be fun. <laughs> That'd be pretty good. <laughs> I mean, Yuki's in the chat well, right now. We can ask, hey, Yuki, you want you want to fucking be Akiza? Are well, you being on a podcast? They're both people that uh like to, you know, never mind. <laughs> Episode 16. <laughs> Battle with the Black Rose, or Japanese title, Return of Witch, Dragon of Destruction, Black Rose <laughs> Dragon. 
Yeah, both, I like both that you say titles. looks at fucking Lua and he's just like, just win, forehead. Yeah. Just be good at dueling. No, you, you say looks at this kid who clearly has not learned anything about uh, how to properly, you know, um, strategize and learn from your mistakes. Uh, and just goes, yeah, every loss is another learning opportunity. And uh, the kid's just like, yeah, an opportunity to fucking lose. And I'm like, damn, you're kind of spitting, but also grow up. <laughs> oh. Okay, I might oh. be wrong on this because I don't understand Japanese. Oh. But based on the way that the Japanese title is structured, I'm going to guess that the title might be a haiku, technically. Haikyuu. I love Haikyuu. Go. Die. What? No, I also I'm like Haikyuu. I'm with you on this. Good. Ah, Sorry, I heard the words Haikyuu, and it's, it's, a, it's a gut reaction. I, I hear volleyballs, and I want to kill. Why? I like Haikyuu. Oh, it's so good. I need to watch the movies. There's another, there's another one called uh, Hikaru no Go. I have, about, like, hey. Hikaru no Go's great. Yeah, sure, and I've seen all of Hikaru no Go. It's, it's, it's fun. It's all right. It's a funny little like thing. Could you want in a size? The best. Anyway, uh, fucking, hey, it's a good-ass episode with, uh, with Akiza facing off against <clears throat> Gil Ransborg. Or, Ugh. in the Japanese, uh, Jiru de Ransubo. Jill de Lancebo. Lancebo. <laughs> into Ransborg. Christ. This fucking dude, man. I hate this dude. I'm so glad he eats shit because I fucking hate him. I despise the way he talks. In the, You're not in LARPing. The, in the dub, does he like yay and verily and shit? Yes, yes. He speaks okay, that's what old I figured. English and it's uh, Eric Stewart, who is the voice of Seto Kaiba doing this. And I, I'm I just rolling my eyes the entire time because I'm fucking sick of it and I need Akiza to girl boss her way to killing him. Uh, allow me to read this note here. Actually, hold on. I have something better for that. You keep talking while I find the thing that I have to play for when I saw her. Oh, dear. Uh, all right. So, um, while, Shut up, phone. while Yusei is talking to the kids, uh, Akiza immediately just walks through the hallway and is like, get out of my way. And I looked at this and I went, ah, no wonder people immediately looked at her and said wife and proceeded to never be normal again. Um, people on the internet inherently want to be bullied. Yes, I, I think to a certain degree that is true. So, this... Th this little scene in the um in the backstage area of the dueling arena is whatever but uh then they actually call these two up for their duel uh and fucking uh what is his shitty english last name R ransborg uh fucking ransborg goes on the sexist side <laughs> tangent ransborg. and i want to kill him He's just like, uh, my opponent is a woman? Verily, this cannot be true. Surely I must... Your, your place the is not in the arena, fair maid. The code of chivalry won't allow me. Oh. Uh, and I just want to fucking bash his head in. Good God. Um, he, uh, he, he does all this preaching, and then uh, Akiza steps up, and in the dub, there is a funny bit where the announcer is, like, trying to figure out things to say about her, and he, like... He, like, takes the mic away from his mouth, and he just goes, What do you mean we have nothing on her? I need something. I need, I need anything to pump up the crowd. Because all they have is her name. Nobody knows who she is, because uh, the Witch of the Black Rose has always been uh, a figure wearing a hood, uh, wearing the cloak, being mysterious. Uh, but, you know, that hair is still visible. And I don't see anybody else's bright red hair here, so, you know, you'd think someone would be able to put two and two together. I can't find it. Can you not? No. That's a shame. It was, it was just the the one old ego raptor bit of him just shouting, I want to put my wiener in that, want to put my wiener in that, but on a loop. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I'm sorry, I'm one of those people who's not normal about Aki. I like her. I mean, like, I get it. She's one of the most popular fucking 5Ds characters for a reason. Yeah. She's really just cool. Good. She is cool as hell, She's... and her deck is neat. <clears throat> 
Her design her is fucking song. phenomenal. She has a really good theme to her. She has one of the coolest of the fucking synchro dragons. Like, yes. oh, Black Rose is so cool. Black, Black Rose. It was genuinely... also meta relevant for a while, which very, very it's, much helped her out. It's still pretty relevant, honestly. It it is kind of crazy that um. You'd think that something called Black Rose Dragon would be, like, kind of stupid in its design. And then you look at what Black Rose Dragon actually looks like, and you go, what the hell? This rules. Oh, it's so fucking this cool. This is phenomenal. It's... The way dragons are designed in Yu-Gi-Oh! clears literally mm -hmm. any other form of media mm -hmm. for me. Because they make Mouse. them all so good. To an extent. Some of the more modern dragons have been kind of dog shit. Looking at mm. you, Odd Eyes. I mean, yeah, oh, well, but that's... I don't know if I'd say that's, that's modern. Oh, okay. Later on, they kind of they kind of dropped the ball on certain designs, because fucking... I'm, I'm gonna be real. Like, fucking Galaxy Eyes Photon? Good. Good shit. It's a blue eyes white dragon fucking copycat, but it's good shit. Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon? Those motherfuckers? Why you got the... Why, why you got the crystal titties? Nobody needs those. Why? Why did Why did Konami start doing the crystal titty dragons? I think crystal titties can be good in moderation. That's my hot take. Hold on, let me get some let me get some really good examples of modern Yu Gi Oh dragons. First off, of course, my boy Snake Eyes Flamber's dragon. Okay, I'm gonna put these. And on second screen. off, my boy Vader's no, eruption dragon of extinction. No, those those two go hard. I'm looking at these. These go hard as hell. They're so fucking cool. All right, so uh, I guess I'm dragons. thinking more in line with like. Here. The fucking iconic, Here. you know, these belong to a character dragons. I want to get one of those oversized cards of a Flamberge to put on my wall because it's so fucking cool. I'm so sad Yu-Gi-Oh! doesn't do oversized cards more often because there are a couple of uh, iconic monsters that I would just like get an oversized card just to have frame it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately a lot they... of times those are like tournament prizes, right? Yeah. I think there's someone who, like, on Etsy makes oversized cards, but I don't know if they're, like, actual cards. Oh. I think it's just posters. I mean, that's still, I mean, still that would be kind of neat. Yeah, that's still really cool. What are those What are those stupid wall stickers called? Fat heads? I don't know what the fuck you're I, talking about. I know what you're talking about. That's not the name, but I can't remember the actual name right now, so... No, sure. that's that's what they're called. Oh, God, are they really? Yeah, that's that's what they're fucking called, fatheads. Um, I knew them by a different name. I I I I'd get a fathead of a few monsters on my wall. That that'd be fucking cool. I I, I remember these fucking shitty commercials for these things. Oh my god. <laughs> nowadays nowadays people only know fucking display, which are the metal posters you put on your wall. Yeah. So, this duel. This duel is very funny. It's it's literally just a uh, sexist man gets beaten to death uh, parentheses in a card game, uh, which makes it one of my favorites of the set, if not my favorite. Uh, and one of my favorites Local LARPer of... takes a bit too far. Correct. More at 11. Arguably my favorite duel of uh, 5Ds so far. It's really fucking solid. It's up there, probably in my top three. Uh, Ransborg... This duel has one of my favorite little touches. Sorry. Uh... Go ahead. Every time Akiza takes damage, nothing. Just no reaction to taking damage. Whereas everyone else who plays fucking dual monsters in this universe, there is a certain level of like fake damage, reaction, wind, etc. that they have that they fucking sit there and go through. Like it affects them. Akiza tanks that shit. Yep. She it's just stands really good. there. <laughs> it's so cool. She just stands there, gets hit, doesn't flinch at all. It's like God, you're so fucking cool. Going from going from Alexis to her is like night and day. It really right? is. And it's so fucked up that we have to pit women against each other like this. But Yu-Gi-Oh! women tend to be done so <laughs> yeah. dirty and so wrong. Yeah. It's a it's a nice treat to see one done right. And I'm very she, worried for her characterization in later seasons. I was just going to say, if she later on ends up doing fuck all and just gets like dog shit... The way that they did to Alexis, I'm going to be furious. Same. The uh, the only complaint I have with with Akiza as a character, at least for the dub, mm -hmm. 
This is not one of my favorite roles from Erica Schroeder. She's credited in this as Bella Hudson, but it's it's Erica Schroeder, voice of my Valentine in season four. Oh. Ooh. Shit. Yeah. Uh, also Dark Magician Girl. I don't feel like that voice style, this higher pitched kind of, I, I don't want to say like more feminine, but like just, you know, girlier voice fits Akiza as a character. I feel like, I feel like something a little lower on the range would have worked really well for her, but. I understand that, but this is like the second episode where we've had her. Yeah. So she might still be figuring out the character and the voice that she wants to commit to at the moment. She's so. four kids of Luffy. I hate that. Oh, yeah. She's, um... Actually, I don't really fucking... hate that voice for Luffy. She's Camilla. She's Mana. She's Serena. Fonda Fontaine. Mana, yeah. Uh, let's see. She's also Rally, by the way. All comes back to Bridget. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> God damn it. Don't fucking do this Bridget. When they showed that dude standing off on the side, just like in his trench coat staring, all I could think to type was, who's this fucking cyborg 009 looking fucker? That's fine. Why is this dude trying to be the doctor? But then I was like, I don't know if that's a thing in that. I remember, I don't know what series, but there's some series with like a robot dude who just wears a trench coat, and I cannot for the life of me remember it. Oh, this is fucked up, yeah. Um, hey, Blaze the Cat. It could be a key kiter. Yeah, Blaze the Cat. Yeah, Erica Schroeder is Blaze the Cat also. Um, huh. Also the voice of Piplup in the Pokemon anime, love that. Uh, Piplup is oomph. Although you I really shouldn't. to her Blaze the Cat voice, you're but really, you really shouldn't. what I would want really shouldn't let your cat blaze at all unless it's like catnip but i mean i don't think weed is bad for them so before the before the duel begins luna reacts to akiza taking like taking the stage saying that her deck seems to be in pain just just making a little note of that because it's a useful tool that might come in handy later yeah this feels <laughs> like it'll be used for character development later down the line yeah. Could be interesting. Uh, and almost immediately in this duel, Akiza summons Black Rose. Holy fucking shit. Hey, yeah. just... your knight's pretty fucking cool. Anyway, Black Rose? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Masked knight level three, because bro's using level monsters in 5Ds, by the way. It's so bro's over. using uh, level monsters. Did we need more level monsters? We really didn't. And they try to make Masked, uh, Masked Knight look cool. And sure, maybe level seven looks kind of neat. But, bro, it's so, so over. <laughs> instantaneously, I looked at Masked Knight and went, this is not a real card. And you know how I fucking knew it wasn't a real card? Mm -hmm. It suffers from the anime original concept of, if we're going to make another version of this card, it's just that, but bigger. Yeah, yeah. its design is Level incredibly boring. It's it's very fucking funny because this thing breaks the design theory for all of the other level monsters. It's so sad because level monsters actually have interesting designs when you look at them and they have significant changes when they go up in the level. Yeah, I love this Arm dragon. You can't tell the difference between level three and level five. You can vaguely tell the difference between level five and level seven. Mm -hmm. It's bad design. I mean, that's kind of the same for like Silent Swordsman and Magician, but... No, no. Those it's more Silent egregious Swords here. Have... Level three with okay with Silent Swordsman, I'll give you that on level five to seven for that one in Magician, but at least with level three to level five, you can instantly tell the difference. Yeah, he's yeah. taller. Well, yeah, he they're grew adult up. versions as opposed to child versions. Well, this that's one... what happens here. He's a little child one, and then he gets a little bigger. Now. The proportions stay mostly the same between this one. It's just bad. And then you have other level monsters like Horus, where it's a very clear difference. And yeah, fucking, Horus is like, fucking cool. Horus though. is so cool. I'll even give the fucking one of the only level good level monsters. Like, yeah, I'll even give the fucking like level ultimate insect, whatever the fuck it's called, credit. It has a fucking clear design like change oh, yeah. with every level. Even the fucking even dark mimic level three to level five to changes significantly. Yeah. Don't half-ass your I level used to, monsters. 
I used to love level monsters. I thought they were a really fucking cool gimmick in Yu-Gi-Oh. They are a bad playing gimmick, but I used to think they were really fucking cool. That but explains a lot of things. Fuck you. I'll kill you. <laughs> I'm going to send you to fucking hell where you belong, Charlie. Huh? What? So, well, uh, if you do that again, I was going to hit you. So there is a point in this dub where uh, the bro talks about how he has a face down trap ready for whatever she's got planned. Uh, mm -hmm. And he mentions oh. that his face down is Sakuretu armor. <laughs> that hurt. My brother that in Christ, it's Sakuretu. It is not that hard. Please, please, uh, please research your kids. cards. Four kids, don't be afraid to say something Japanese challenge. Yeah. I'm back. Um, one thing about Welcome Sakuretsu back. armor. Mm -hmm. Japanese name is just reactive armor. Yeah. It's, I imagine it's, that's just what Sakuretsu still on the means. Episode Probably. 16. Yeah. Freaking cosplayer. Yeah, I know. He's, <laughs> yeah, just, he's just out here true. LARPing and being sexist, and it sucks. I'm glad he loses. <laughs> oh, man. So yeah, uh, Akiza gets Black Rose Dragon out, and it's a fucking good-ass entrance for that monster. Immediately, every other signer in the building has a fucking strong reaction. Mm -hmm. We love to see it. The other thing I really love about this duel is that in order to expose whether or not a duelist is a signer, they need to be put under extreme duress. Um, they don't necessarily have to lose, they just have to be, like, going through it. You just got And they them. physically cannot get that out of Akiza because she's too fucking good at the game. She's, she's so good, she's coasting, she doesn't give a fuck, there is no way in hell you will get her stressed enough to expose whether or not she has the mark. It is great. It's phenomenal. So, like, this is a genuine fucking thing I noticed also. Mm -hmm. This... This fucking knight dude, I don't think he has more than three monsters in his entire deck. And they're all the masked knights? <laughs> yeah, no, because, like, the only things he summons this entire duel is masked knight level three through seven. I'm, I'm looking at the play-by-play -play on the wiki right now to confirm that, because that's insane if true. Hey, I have uh, yeah, another fun fact about Sakuretsu armor. Yeah. Yeah. Sakuretsu means explosion. But oh. it's different from it's different from Bakuretsu. Because Bakuretsu oh. is specifically a fiery explosion and Sakuretsu is like a bursting balloon. Ooh. And now huh. we know. So So you're saying that Sakuretsu armor, in terms of Yu-Gi-Oh lore. Inflates you big and round, mean... yes. God damn it. No, it deflates you God small. God fucking and, damn it. Small and uh, flat. <laughs> No, it no, it pops you like a balloon. Yeah. Yeah, it deflates you. So it's anyway, yeah, the tummy. bro only has masked knights level three, five, and seven. Everything else he uses are spell and traps. Owen's oh, new guy who was super bro, into balloon popping. Into what? what a loser! I'm sorry, you get what? <sighs> I'm just not thinking about that too long. Um, <laughs> but every play that Akiza has to counter anything that bro thinks he's able to do is really good. I, I like that she has all her tokens, and she's just... He's anticipating a very specific play from her. And she's like, no, what if I sack no. everything on my field to bring back a monster from my grave? Ha ah, wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that just be neat? Can I say, I love that when she took control of a shitty little knight, that it, like, got on its knee and, like, kissed her hand. I was just like... She yeah. knows what's up. She's such a girl boss. It's not not only does amazing. she know what up what's up, uh the animators knew exactly what this woman was gonna do to the generations to come. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just instantly the fucking level three knight was like my queen. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, God, like everyone on insane. Twitter. Fuck is it your posting God, I wish that was me seven fucking times in a row. Yeah. Uh -huh. My I, queen I feet picks. Please. No 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 uh uh. <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Shit, that would have been that would have been a dumbass edit. Just fucking put some text over her over no. the over the fucking knight mm -hmm. holding her hand. Can I can I also have they been calling tribute summons advanced summons this whole time? That and they've been saying instead of tributing a monster, releasing a monster, which releasing has yeah, its own, is weird. Has its own connotations. 
We it's sure like do one of those good monstrous release. I was <laughs> like, not thinking about that until you said it. Well, yeah, fuck? I wasn't thinking that either, actually. Uh, these are holograms, bro. It's, yeah, it seems like again, they really... Shibuya, mm -hmm. we had a bit during Duel Monsters uh -huh. where we brought up that Kaiba would absolutely have implemented into these holograms sent texture and taste Only because of how much eyes. he loves his blue eyes Only white dragon eyes, you brother. can't tell Isn't me there something that like the that in like vr chat is not what that is yeah i'm vr chat has has maybe not, like the suits not the where you can stuff, feel but... people touch you but yeah it's, it's fucking freaky Ooh, yeah i'm just saying Fucking whoever Man. takes on Kaiba's fucking work afterward would definitely take that shit too far. I'm just and imagining a world where we're allowed to normal summon Diabelle Star and I can lick her. Anyway, uh, the rest <laughs> of this episode, uh, advanced summons are really cool, I guess. <gasps> uh, Black Rose is really yeah. sick. I love its monster effect. Black Rose Dragon is so fucking yeah. cool, Wait, can I tell dude. a story that's kind of like, kind of... <laughs> Tangential. What? what could you possibly Go ahead, have? man. What could you possibly you have? my blessing. <laughs> so one of my friends, uh, it, he didn't sign anything, but he got a Tifa life-sized companion doll sent to him. Huh? Oh. You guys heard about these things? Yeah, I've heard uh, of yeah, He's these. never opened it. He never opened it, but they sent it to him. <laughs> and they were like, hey, can you uh, can you like do a video of this? Uh, like just promoting our product and we'll pay you money. I, uh, like like a oh, like a real sex doll? doll? Bro got a teeth a sex for doll. real doll? Yeah. It had I'm trying to think. He like gave me all like he like because they, he... they had a very intense list of like everything it could do. I think it had like <laughs> oh my God. like it had like heat settings. It has <laughs> like certain lights inside of it that would kill bacteria and then you like oh, came no. inside. Was of it, it equipped to dolphin fist him or something? Damn. Oh, God. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh, your anyway. friend is living cat's dreams. No, no, not That's quite, Tifa, because I sent him Tifa, not Aerith. Yeah, she wanted Aerith, but I mean, uh -huh. you know, it's like it, uh -huh. <laughs> she wants that. <laughs> to be fair, her reasons Anyways. for wanting it are very distinct. I just want to Why? dress her up when? and make her look pretty. Yeah. And your parents get to live with a sex doll in their house. Put it in, <laughs> put it in your passenger seat when you're driving. That way you can take the carpool lane. That's oh the no, best God. reason to get one. The best reason to get one, honestly. Honestly, that's fair. <laughs> put some sunglasses on that bitch. You'll, you'll make it through. Oh, man. I, um, mm, mm, <laughs> actually, okay. wait. The the mental image, realizing that most of those are probably built with their mouth hanging open. <laughs> Masked no, up with sunglasses on. It's fine. No, there's some with the mouth can close. Okay. I don't need to know. I don't need to know. That. Uh, uh, episode 17. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> AKA. Everyone. Everyone hates. Oh. Everyone hates Aki. But listen, she's just fucking. You just hate her because you're not her. No, I don't. That's all oh, it is. Right. As a matter um, of fact, I really. No, I mean like her. the people in the crowd. Ah, uh, fair. Because they're just like, oh, get out of here, witch. Uh, and it's like, shut up. You just wish you had a cool dragon. Yeah. Episode 17, surprise, surprise. Also known as Flame Revenger, Speed King Star Skull Flame. And I'm also, saying star, they literally put a little text star in sure the middle did. of the title. I love yeah, it. I'm also really known great. also known as you say, please use Stardust. Don't blue ball me. I need it now, <laughs> not you know, later. This, now this motherfucker that. ain't worth using Stardust. It's fine. I guess, yeah. Uh, so who was looking to see Hunter Pace again? Who was looking to see Mr. Ghost Rider out here? I had a feeling he'd here? show up. I, I had a feeling he'd show up based on the fact that he's shown up twice so far already. The second he showed up, I was like, oh, he's going to knock out the dude in the fucking cloak and replace him. And then he didn't do that immediately and then bursts out on the scene and it is him. And I'm like, yeah, like it, uh... it, it just, just writes itself. It helps that the guy in the cloak, yeah, his cloak is a straight up one for one match to Hunter Pace's aesthetic. I looked yeah. at him when he first showed up and I thought, oh, is that Hunter Pace in disguise? No, <laughs> it's just some other asshole stealing his shtick. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. So, so... anyway, this episode's uh, all about <laughs> discount bandit Keith. Yeah, it sure is. Um, I, I genuinely could not believe that. He had this plan. One of the dumbest plans I've ever seen in Yu-Gi-Oh! 
arguably, outside of an actual duel, because we've seen some bad duels. Um, Bro is such a hater. He's such a little fucking hater that he needs to get in there and duel Jack Atlas because he needs to reclaim his title as the champion. So he rides his motorcycle over the guards for the stadium. And then he gets in there. The guards are chasing him. And he steals one of their outfits. And yeah. it, it just works. How? Is he How supposed to be like an off, like a, uh, what's the word? Off, uh. Knock off. Off brand, like, uh, Ghost Rider? We did make jokes about that. Uh, he, he did remind us of like, uh, Ghost Rider, or if you're familiar with SMT at all, Hellbiker. Uh, that mm -hmm. was actually an edit in episode one. It's yeah. on the screen right now. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. He just has the vibes. <laughs> he's. Yeah. Right. Because that's when SMT5 came out. Yeah. Right? He's basically just fucking cool motorcycle, fucking Harley Davidson design kind of character. Well, we'll be good. Yeah. Cool. What the fuck? You can't be saying that shit on content, bro. You can't be saying that, green baby. <laughs> green baby, you can't say that. Well, no, he's only green when he's asleep. When he wakes up, his skin turns flesh-colored. Shibri, can you <laughs> wave bash like the boss can? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, uh, now, if I did that, you'd be able to figure out my glowing weak point. I'm not giving you that oh, information. Shit, that's true. That's <laughs> I wanted you to do that. Yes, yeah. that's ugly goo. <laughs> 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 this is the worst episode for audio only <laughs> listeners, I think. <laughs> we just devolve into smiling friends and impressions ASMR constantly. I'm sorry to the audio something. only people. I learned something about YouTube music. Yeah. Because that's what I'm forced to use now since Google music doesn't exist anymore. Or oh, Google yeah. Podcasts. Spotify. Yeah. Use Spotify. Shut I'm not paying for Spotify Premium. The, I'm not doing it. I don't want to sit through the ads. Okay. Bio. Okay. Honestly, the only reason I'm paying for that shit is because I get Hulu with it for fucking a discount. But I learned that if there's a, I learned that if there's, thank you for moving away from me. He was freaking me out. His big old eyes. <laughs> uh, but the thing I learned is that if, if there's a video version, <laughs> if there's a video version for a podcast, it will just play it on YouTube music. Huh. Which I didn't know. Sorry, I was I was sucking. Pretty cool. Feet. He's doing a little dance. Look at him go. He's wave dashing. He's what he's doing. Da 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 uh, if this never goes live, you understand why. <laughs> so, if I, if I'm, I, I'm sorry. That's what Yuki came uh, back to, okay. apparently. We don't Hell talk yeah. about chat that often, but Yuki apparently has not been watching the video, or this watching the, the stream for this long, and you comes back to Bio being pregnant and Yuki, breastfeeding. Yuki, you missed my comparison to you. Well, anyway. I can Carl's toes? No, I said I can, I, I can suck Carl's teeth. Huh? Because I was I was right up close to you, so I went talking so, about Yu-Gi-Oh. Anyway, a when the, <laughs> I guess I should have drawn Carl as Mr. Boss. No, when that, when that little when that little clown freak was with uh, the the Grim Reaper guy in the sub, did you notice that the sub said that the little freak was just like it was a male rat? I did. For some reason, just specifies that the mouse that ran out after he threw the card in. Uh, Skull man's fucking direction just goes like the rat is male, and it's like, but what is that? Why I, did you have to say that? I don't know, man. What the in the fuck? dub, all he does is go, You got rats, that's it. You got rats, <laughs> it's so um, weird. So, this is the only time that this character, Shira, ever shows up. So, the, the, the small bit of trivia we have for him. <clears throat> Of the dueling assassins, he is known as the Shinigami Reborn. Further referenced by the Doku Dokuro Yaiba card that he threw into Hunter Pace's helmet. Okay, which Dokuro has Yaiba. Shinigami in its name. 
uh, in in fucking in Japanese, Dokura Dokura Dokuro Yaiba is Shinigami Boomerang, Death God Boomerang. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Shit, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. That's all we know about this guy, aside from like supposedly anyone who's ever dueled him has never dueled again. Oh, hey, isn't it really he never funny? shows up again. That in a duel, he can apparently do this to people and ruin their lives, and then in real life, when it comes down to it, uh, his ass is pathetic. Oh, yeah. It's so Dude funny. just got assaulted. Yes. That's it. Got the uh, shit beat out of him, and he was just like, oh, it was the skull boy. It's so funny. Uh, I, I also Why do adore... Why do this to me? I, I adore that not only does um, Hunter's whole plan work somehow, not only does he sneak his bike... In here, somehow. He puts on the cloak, he gets in the middle of the arena, and uh, as they start riding and he reveals himself, they just let this happen! <laughs> this yeah, don't be try fun. to stop it! This Goodwin literally cool just it goes... Happen. Goodwin literally just goes, If you're waiting on my approval, you have it. I don't care. God. No, I, I, I did type asking after seeing uh, the full extent of this man's big fire hair. How does his big ass hair fit in that helmet? And then immediately saw it all sort of smushed down the back of his neck. And I was like, oh, yeah, that does make sense. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of fucking hair, dude. Uh, I do love this sentence from the wiki uh, is like when when Hunter first is revealed and they're riding around the arena at the start. Uh, <clears throat> and I quote, many people are surprised, but Lazar coolly stands next to Goodwin, neither of whom have reacted majorly to the turn of events. <laughs> Like the, Shira got his ass kicked. Yeah, they they just look at each other and go, "Yeah, of course Shira got his ass beat." This is shocking. Walks in, yeah, we were walks in looking like, just we a were, little sad. Goodwin just sitting there, like we were really trying to hype him up too much. We're we're going to kill him when he, when he gets out of the hospital. We're just gonna put him right back in there. Yeah, I'm gonna take him out to the field and just like, don't just look at the flowers. Don't turn around. Uh, so anyway, uh, fucking Yusei and Hunter Pace start their fucking turbo duel, and it's actually kind of cool. Yeah. Like, I don't hate Hunter Pace, honestly. Like, he's got an interesting deck fucking concept. He's got a whole bunch of, like, fiery skull-based fuck-off monsters that are neat. I've seen He does some competent fucking spells and traps. It's, it's neat. And it's nice to have a speed duel in the middle of this batch, which is very firmly rooted in the we're gonna stand in the middle of this arena and just monologue at each other duels. I, uh, I really gotta wonder, like, what the... Like, what makes them decide to do a turbo duel instead of a stadium duel, you know? Oh, uh, they both have bikes. I, I, I guess it's literally just, like, I feel fucking... Like... We we couldn't put the we couldn't put the twins on the scooter. So to be fair, as far as Goodwin and Lazar know, the only duels they've seen you say do are turbo duels. So it might be something as simple as like, hey, you know, you want to push him to his limit, hit him where it hurts, in the format he's most comfortable in. Or it might be something True. as like vile as like, oh, that satellite probably only knows how to turbo duel. Well, what would he be able to do standing and dueling? He can't do that. No, I think yeah, it's I just really as simple as I think it's just as simple as they both have bikes. Is there a difference between like the different types of dueling? Uh, yeah, turbo duels. duels well, I know, like the turbo rules, but like, it, why? Why did they do this in a tournament? Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, I guess it just changes it up for the audience. But also, uh, turbo duels do have the they do have the extra thing of you can't use a normal spell card; you have to use specific like speed spells. So. Right. You effectively yeah, uh, have to have like a, a a side deck for your for your thing. Konami really wanted to push a new way to duel, and it was not very good. But they tried. <laughs> Do you think kids tried to like duel on their bikes? Definitely. Oh, yeah. Yes, and I <laughs> oh, think yes. I think a bunch of kids ended up getting dual discs um, secondhand for Christmas, and then mm. fucked up their arms because they tried to ride a bike and also duel. <laughs> I think a lot of kids try to like strap them to the handlebars of their bikes and then got hit by a semi truck. Jesus no, Christ! I think that dude. one's a little less common, dude. <laughs> I mean, it definitely had to have happened. I think it, well, my uncle said it happened to a kid he knew. I mean, if it happened once, that's fair, but like, I, I doubt it's common. That was not true. You're not true. Uh, 
Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Send sorry, this fucker to Quadratum! <laughs> oh. Bye bye. Nope. It's fine, you're back. You're good. Back. We killed you and brought you back. Don't ask how. Nobody wants to know how. So, uh. I wonder what it would feel as... like to die and then come back, like, six minutes later. I also think about it. It's happened sometimes. to me before. Huh? You didn't know the line well, was I mean, zombie bio? Oh. I thought you said something six, serious. Six <laughs> minutes and you'll have uh, no brain capacity left because the oxygen, the lack of oxygen will just uh, render you brain dead. So I imagine it wouldn't feel like much at all. You'd yep. just be meat with electrical signals running through it. Ugh. Is that not where we are now? I mean, yeah, damn, but like, that's like, deep. <laughs> we're meat with electrical signals and we pretend that they have meaning now. All right, I'm you wouldn't be able I'm to gonna, do the pretending. I'm gonna pretend. You know, have you guys looked into like ego death? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. I yes, just... actually, it happens with when you do when you do uh, hallucinogenics like, like shrooms. Yep. Anyway. Okay. Um. What happens when we host this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm, I'm so. Done. So Hunter's whole whole deck gimmick relies on him gaining a shitload of speed counters, like, real quick. And also fucking keeping Yusei from getting them, which makes fucking sense. I would assume that that's, like, every fucking speed, fucking turbo dual deck. But, you know, he's, like, he's also got some cool shit in there. He's got fucking Speed King Skull Flame. Yep, yeah, Speed cool. King Skull Flame kinda rules. And it's fucking, like, previous... Uh, not form, but like his previous monster that he uses for it what was what the fuck was it called? Just Skull Flame. Uh, yes. It was cool. Yeah, his his not... deck aesthetically, it's a gazelle. I respect it. There's not like the biggest amount to say about the duel itself. The majority of the duel has. Hunter Pace, like, on on the fucking, you know, winning side, with Yusei barely able to do much until the very end, where Yusei just is able to do things by basically giving Hunter his own monster and attacking into it, which was kind of cool. Yeah, the, was the, the speed counters were at 6 and 11 for a bit, and it was a little scary. It was a little close. Lois Griffin voice. Nine. Huh? Twelve. <laughs> no, the next number is ten. You oh, go from shit. nine to ten. That's how counting works. Um, is that what's after nine? Yeah. And then you, you know, shit. at the end of the duel, uh, you say summons his ace monster that for for this duel, not his stardust. No, just a good old, good old fucking jet engine butthole. Yeah. <laughs> Nitro warrior. <laughs> <laughs> I. If we just call him Jet Engine Butthole from now on, we have to fucking make the custom card for it. <laughs> <laughs> Nitro Warrior is so fucking gross. What an awful creature. Yeah, like... So bad. I don't understand why Nitro Warrior looks like that and then also has a Jet Engine ass. I... It's so much to take in. I, I hate it. It's like a lot of his mo his uh, Synchro monsters and stuff are all, like, machines and stuff, and Nitro Warrior... or Nitro Synchron's, like... This little cylinder dude. So then when it just turns into this big guy with an engine ass, it's like, that's awful. I hate this. It's yeah. It's very funny. It's also especially funny to think about Nitro Warrior with that fucking meme where they just go, <laughs> that ass can fart. <laughs> that thing, that thing blows up a building when it does it. Uh, Pardon don't... me, do you fart with that ass? Oh, God. Um... The duel's good. I don't really have much else to say. I like I like when you say like relied on uh the hunter explicitly like bumping up uh how many speed counters he's got so that he could then just hit him with the fucking reversal. Sorry. That was pretty cool, yeah. I just I just started imagining fucking Hunter looking at Nitro Warrior talking to like fucking Eddie Burback just you fart with that ass. <laughs> <Christ>. <laughs> so Cuz he did say that in in the Rainforest Cafe video, I think. I mean, yeah, uh, but uh, what does that make you say, Ted Navision? Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the statement. That's just cool. Uh, all right. 
Well, before we talk about the the last two um, the last two episodes of the batch, and uh, subsequently the trauma of a child, I'm afraid we have something else we very much need to discuss. Oh, this is serious. Ego death. Now it's our <laughs> fucking ad break. Oh, Woo-hoo! so yes. There we go. Uh, all right, so uh, this ad break is going to be a little. Uh, a little more in depth than the usual. There we go. I don't know why that was uh, in a weird spot. So, cool. I do have an announcement on this one um, that I'm going to preface the whole thing oh. with. Uh, and thing things will change. Things will be figured out later down the line. But um, at this very moment, uh, I am stepping down from hosting Millennium Mike once 5Ds is done. That's... Uh, it's for my own mental health I th- this podcast started as a thing for fun and it don't get me wrong uh, I, I deeply appreciate everybody who supports it I, I appreciate the fact that uh, I, I have co-hosts who consistently want to come in and, and join me for this and who have a good time doing it um, but he just hates us what the fuck man no, why would you say that? <laughs> I'm trying to be serious here, dude. What the fuck? Yeah, come on, Carl. Have some class. Jesus Christ. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Hosting duties stress me out because I, I have both crippling um, executive dysfunction and, like, a smidge of perfectionism in me, which is one of the most nuclear combinations you can have as a human being to, to just make you constantly stressed and feel like you're not doing enough. Um, and I, I know that I have um, dropped the ball in certain aspects of, like, Patreon rewards and stuff. And uh, I, I do apologize for that. It's a cocktail of shit in my life that has led to, um, like, really severe burnout and just a, a general inability to uh, get my shit together. <laughs> but the good news is that uh, we're discussing plans for the future... So, 5Ds may not be the end of Millennium Mike. Uh, just stay tuned for that, because we do need to have some discussions behind the scenes. But just know that uh, the podcast will probably continue on, and I will probably still be a part of it. I will just not be hosting. So, it'll it'll probably be on a new Twitch channel. It will probably still be going. Uh, things should remain generally the same on your end. And we will keep you updated if things change on that front just so essentially uh, yeah to sum this up for everybody uh things are changing but not in a capacity that matters that much to any of y'all because if we do continue past 5ds essentially you go to a different web page that's it yeah um we we again um some behind the scenes talk will be had we will be figuring this out and we will keep you updated if anything should change sooner than we expect. But for now, 5Ds, everything should remain the same. So, that's... You know, that's... that's um, I don't have a good segue for this. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and push into the general ad read. Um, hey, did you know we have a Twitter? Twitter.com slash Millennium Mike. Uh, over oh. there, we will... Post, Holy uh, post announcements as to when we're going live and when things change on the podcast and if um, we have to cancel. Actually, I think you mean X. No, I don't. <laughs> Twitter still <laughs> redirects. We can still say Twitter. It's fine. They can take Twitter from my cold, dead fucking hands. Um, the, the fucking Twitter URL still technically works for me, but if I try to change to any of my alternate fucking, like, <laughs> accounts, then it swaps to the X URL. It's yeah. fucking dumb. No, it's very stupid. Uh, so on our Twitter, we will announce if there are any last minute changes to the schedule, to, uh, uploading, if there are any issues. Uh, we will post all of our thumbnail edits for the given week of Mill Mike. Um, we will announce when we have new guests. Uh, sometimes we will post and retweet funny memes. Um, just, you know, if you want to stay updated on Millennium Mike, Twitter is probably the best place to do it. So consider checking us out there. We also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Millennium Mike. Uh, if you go over there for as little as five bucks a month, 
you get access to things like our movie commentary tracks for Pyramid of Light and Dark Side of Dimensions. You get access to archives of past mill mic specific stream VODs. So stuff like my Millennium Puzzle model build, uh, model kit build that took nine hours uh, last year. So, you know, if you want to see the process and understand why Piece 24 is a bitch. Oh, yeah. There. Yeah. Yeah. Carl, you built that. Uh, can oh, you, yeah, can I did. you give the people a little bit of your experience? Uh, well, I uh, got through a good amount of it myself, and then I had I was holding one piece, looking at it, going, "One piece, the where one piece? the fuck, the one piece." I was looking at it, going, <laughs> "Where the fuck does this one go?" So I looked up a video on where it's supposed to go, and saw a different piece that was supposed to go in another part nearby, and I went, "How the fuck are you supposed to fucking?" Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but it's done. Yeah. No, it's really it's cool. Also, it's finished. That's also very easy to fall apart. Patreon, fucking patreon.com slash M I L L E N N I U M M I C. Yeah. Uh, -E -Y -M -I -U -C. If, you, if you have any doubt, uh, if you're a video viewer, you can look at the logo, all of the word millennium, and then just the three letters from Mike. Uh, Join the Patreon or I'll, I'll bust your kneecaps. Yeah. No, oh. you're not going to do that. That's, I'm that's not worse. I'm going to let you. Uh, so, the I'll other give you thing ego you can death. <laughs> <laughs> The other things you can get uh, over on Patreon as a benefit, um, you can get things like special shoutouts during episodes of Millennium Mike, like our Blue Eyes White Dragons, our $25 tier. Oh, that's why the ad reach Whoa. is... Uh, I mean, whatever. Just do it. Um, Blue Eyes White Dragons... Uh, why the fuck is everything under here? Hold on. Uh-oh. Did you update your OBS? Uh, no, I didn't. Because then the mic would be oh. fucked. Uh, there we go. That should fix it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, tech issues aside, Blue Eyes White Dragons, 25 bucks a month. You get your name on screen and in the description of every single episode of the show. On top of that, we have our Forbidden Ones, our $50 tier. Uh, Whoa! Same as the Blue Eyes, but you get your name read aloud as well. Uh, so thank you very much to our current Forbidden One, Zombie Slayer 51. Much appreciated. Longtime patron. Yay! Thank you so much. And last but absolutely not least is our God Cards, our $100 tier. Thank you so much for your support, Shiny Mew. And One of these days, I'm going to go through the, the fucking process of getting Shiny Mew on Emerald. One of these days. Hmm, that's fair. Oh god, I, I hate the way my, my guy is just able to look <laughs> at up Hey and there from this. Hey there, everybody. <laughs> I see you, Shiny Mew. Hi there, everyone. I just wanted to say thank you for supporting us on them their Patreon. I'm uh, gonna come by your house and make you smile. Mm, I don't like that. Okay. Join uh, the Patreon and I'll be oogly doo. Oogly doo. Uh so please remember. <sighs> Before you support any creator on Patreon, uh, regardless of whether or not it's us, uh, make sure that you have enough money for yourself to make rent, to buy food, to, you know, stay warm, to feed your pets. Ma make sure that you have enough income for yourself before you spend any on us. If you want to support the podcast, but you cannot financially, word of mouth also helps a ton. So sharing the podcast with people who you think might enjoy it, that's huge for us as well. Don't feel like you're less of a fan because you can't give us money. That's not the case. Anybody who tells you otherwise is uh, a piece of shit. You're all appreciated. Yeah. Especially you. I'm, I'm, I'm pointing at you. I'm pointing at you specifically. Okay, sure, but we'll... not you. No, sure. What about them? You know what you did. Sure, sure, sure. What about that guy over there? And them? They know what they did. What the fuck? They have to live with their son. I don't know what they did. What do you mean they... They know what they right. did. You, you gotta tell me this shit in should advance. We, should we, should we, did I not fucking tell you the? No, Whoa. you didn't. Okay. Can't say that. Hmm. I'm gonna have to think about that one. Uh. <laughs> now, is there anything that anyone else would like to promote? If you like the anime Mega Man NT Warrior, you might like this podcast called Program Advance. Pause. For Bioroxis to say something. Oh. Wonderful. 
We're covering the anime, Mega Man NT Warrior, based off of the games, Mega Man Battle Network. Join me, Chora, and Yuki, and Double Soul, as we traverse this anime <laughs> that has things like the world's worst VTuber. Oh god. Chisao. Fucking Yuki being real thirsty for, for Miss Mari. Of course. Of course they would. Come on, bro. <laughs> Come on. And also wonderful bits like that time I was paid to draw <laughs> libertarian guys with hot Asian wives images <laughs> of both of my podcast hosts. That's great. Now, the wonderful thing is that uh, Shora getting paid to draw his co-hosts uh, doing or being something that's a little bit funny and also a little bit uh, unsettling is not a... Uh, <laughs> A program advance exclusive bit. The art you're seeing no. right now is because our live viewers last week paid Shora enough money that he drew us all as smiling friends. If you would like to pay me to make something incredibly stupid, or funny, or both, or terrible, as long as it's within reason, you can go to twitter.com slash Shora Art. That's S-H-O-R-A-H bottom dash A-R-T. You can also contact me on Discord at the name Shora. Uh, I link all of our I'd... socials in the descriptions of episodes, so if you have any doubts about that, you can uh, usually find links there. I like money to make funny. Any anyway, fucking, uh, now you can hear from these other assholes. Anybody else got anything to promote? Hey, uh, keep an eye out for the Millennium Microphone Master Saga or, M or M Millennium Microphone Mega Master Saga or M4S. The Masters have come to play. Yeah, when is G gonna? Um... G's working on the first episode. Okay. I, I, I talked with I, I chatted with okay. G about okay. how the how the edit's going. Good. Um, I, I just wanted to be sure. He's he's gotten through the pack stuff. He's on I the just, duels now, I believe. I wanted to make sure I that just, uh, all the footage was sent his way. <laughs> yeah, I just need to get the, the the money to to pay G for it. Yeah, that's 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 fair. fair. That's completely fair. Things have been a little um, rough. patreoncom slash Yay! Uh, yeah. It's been real fucking, real fucking hard to resist not putting together a fucking GoFundMe or something lately. I'm gonna be real. Yeah, things have uh, been happening at a speed that is uh, too rapid and does not stop recently. Yeah. So. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, buddy, you got anything to fucking say? Me? You got anything you want to promote? Yeah. I'm still. Uh, well, I had to take a break because of this steam stuff but psychology of terror is coming out soon hell yeah oh, that's awesome wow, very excited for that one someday i'll watch and this is Terra yeah. kingdom hearts not Terra final fantasy right N no yeah kingdom hearts let's go that's Even my goal next, uh, next final fantasy will be on clive rossfield hell no. yeah two bangers back to back let's go <laughs> i don't know when i'll get now bio one. i want to ask something something yeah. very important when are you going to do a video on the analysis of the strength level of Goofy and Donald and talk it's... about how ridiculous it is that Donald Duck can cast Zeta Flare? Did you see my which uh, is a... my video on the psychopathy of Donald? So no, I did not see that, but that sounds amazing. Holy shit. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. I, had, I got a voice actor, to, or not a voice actor, but a friend got like came on to do all the, the voice work. It's really funny. That's really good. Shit. Um, I, I do think it would be a funny April Fool's bit if you just went from, like, um, you know, uh, move analysis into just being a power scaler and bullshitting your way through <laughs> Donald oh, Duck yeah. on the tier list of fictional <laughs> characters where it's like Donald could be Goku. No. Could be Goku. Okay, Bio, <laughs> yeah. I, have a fun, I have a fantastic April Fool's to uh, pitch for you. Mm -hmm. The psychology of Yen Sid, but you just do it as a complete like fucking breakdown of Walt Disney. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that is his name backwards. Exactly. You talk about the actual person Walt Disney, but you frame it as if you're talking about Yen Sid. Oh my god. No, you start talking about Michael Eisner, you just Photoshop Yen Sid's head onto photos of this man. <laughs> you mean Ericus. Oh wait, no, that's square. My yeah. brain fucking doesn't you work out. You were so close. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can't wait for them to introduce an OC that's fucking just Eisner backwards or something. I don't think I we need to honor Eisner with a place in Kingdom Hearts, I'll be real. <sighs> Alright, um... Any last stuff to promote before I go into the dipships ad? Don't forget to check out D-Ships, the Dipships Humble Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression Series. I okay. hate it. What? Oh? I, I lose all the time. Mm, skill mm. issue. Hate when Nick's, just, Nick's just too good a card game. I need to get Nick to help me deck build. No. <laughs> I forbid it. God. <laughs> sure, you should DM him. You should. You should do that. That'd be very funny. Ugh, all no. right. Good ideas. It's time uh, for the dipships ad, everybody. Oh, oh wait. Do you have something you want to add, Troy? Don't look out the window. Dipships! <laughs> Do you enjoy boating? How about listening to some friends tell a few stories and talk about their weeks? Then I've got just the podcast for you. Dipships, the legitimate boating podcast. Every week, Carl, PM, Medi, and Nick get together and tell their favorite stories and recap what's been going on in their lives and talk about boating too, I guess. Check us out on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Podbean. And we'll see you on the Nautical Mile. Uh, uh, all right, well. Uh, so anyway, Bio, congratulations on your pregnancy and, uh, and, and the um, breastfeeding. I'm glad that's going well for you. Thanks. Can I you get five Ds, episode eight. <laughs> no, I was that's... gonna wait until we finished. You know my wife to talk no, about actually. this personal stuff. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't just gonna drop <laughs> in the middle of the podcast. It was a little rude. No, it's about it's triplets, right? Triplets? Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, how, up how how you you too soon to know. You? Too soon. Okay. Well, no Wait, are you having another fucking kids? Yes. D what? <laughs> These fucking breeders, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Episode 18 opens, in, at least in the dub, uh, with the worst man alive going, Professor, <laughs> hello, it's me, Lazar. And if I heard that, I would grab the nearest blunt object and beat him to death. Yo, I, no, this man does not invade my space and then say this shit. And then get I can't to wait for away. Bile to shoot an egg out of his mouth like King Piccolo. Anyway, oh! uh, Return oh. of the Spirit World, part one. Now I had man? to I had to issue one of my one of my openings for this week mm -hmm. because it was related to this disgusting freak and I hated it. Yeah. Of just Hey Luca, what's your favorite Pokemon? Mine is Hypno. Uh, I don't like uh, this guy. Can we talk about how? Yeah, this no, this dude, guy fucking sucks. Th this dude, he's just called the Professor in English, which is fine. It's menacing enough for how much of a weirdo he him. is. Uh in Japanese, his name's Professor Frank. <laughs> yeah, oh, sure like Paper is. Mario. That's that's really funny. So like. This duel sucks when you think about it from the perspective of, like, somebody fucking coming out here to watch this duel. Because, uh, yeah. half of it is spent with them basically just staring at each other, not doing much of anything. Uh-huh. Considering that Luna's just hypnotized throughout half of it. Yeah, um, I really did not like the idea that, um... You know, to, to unlock the signer powers that are dormant within somebody, you gotta fuck them up. And the moment Leo lost, they were like, well, that's fine. We'll, we'll just have to push the girl to her limits. And I was like, don't you fucking do that. I'll, I'll kill you. You're not going to do that to a child. <laughs> and then they Give do the it to the child. Give the child trauma and they'll gain power. Yeah. 
give the child trauma Every and expose their glowing ever. weak point. <laughs> Ugh, um... So, uh, the episode starts with us, like, talk, like, fucking Lazar talking with Frank, and then we swap to the stands where, uh, crowd is, crowd is watching Yusei, who just won his duel, fucking Leo and Luna and all of them are fucking talking and stuff, and then the MC announces that there's gonna be a loser's bracket! Yay! Wahoo! Leo, get, <laughs> Leo gets very excited at the idea of being able to duel again, except, uh, the totally legitimately randomly chosen losers bracket mm -hmm. chooses luna and then they spotlight the actual luna yeah so there's no time to yep. do another bait and switch where they gender bend but this time it has to actually be luna to go up because luna is at the center of everyone's attention right now no way to get out of it uh and she does not like to duel in public but uh you know they're gonna force the child to do this so yeah yeah. Hmm. Uh, after after some talking, she very very reluctantly gets up and heads down. Um. What what fucking what it came up immediately next? Did they go into the backstory stuff or did they fucking? Um. I'm, no. Oh no. Yanagi. Yanagi. Yanagi asks about what her deck is is about, and uh, apparently Luna built a spirit deck since she can communicate with dual spirits, which Leo pretends is, like, not a thing. Yeah, uh, but I, I think it's interesting that this spirit deck, it mostly just includes, like, there's a lot of references to fae in folklore or, and fairies, which is really interesting. Like, one of the spell cards explicitly name drops Oberon, which is kind of cool. It's, it's very funny that they call this a spirit deck when they really should just call it a fairy deck, mm -hmm. uh, considering that spirits are a real fucking type of monster in Yu-Gi-Oh that yeah, are actually kind of interesting, even if they're dog shit, yeah. Yeah. I mean, a couple of them are decent. There's uh, a couple. Bad. Yeah, so, um... Up, up in Goodwin's uh, the fucking luxury suite, he and Jack are talking about this kid and how this kid's a signer and pulling up all of her history because they did thorough background checks. Um, and Jack has a moment where he very much seems kind of spiteful about how this entire tournament is set up uh, because it's not really about him dueling. There's ulterior motives here and he doesn't like that and I respect that. He's here, for, he's here to play the game and nothing else. But, uh, no, we gotta traumatize children here. It's Yu-Gi-Oh! We gotta fucking do this. So, uh, you know, the- Luna- Luna walks up to the stage. Uh, she's out here. And then Frank walks up and immediately gives off vibes that make me want to kill him. Yeah, he's disgusting. He sucks. Jen, just like- can I- I gotta share the screenshot. Uh-huh. Because I don't like this man. Okay. Am I in the right? I'm in the right chat. Okay. Look at how long his face is. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Bro, dude has the most generic fucking character design I've ever seen. Yeah, this is he the really most does. nothing character I've ever seen in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's like uncanny, though. It's like his nose and mouth are so far down. His eyes are just like all the way well, up there. It's like... If his nose wasn't that far down, it would be even worse as a design. Fucking sucks. Dollar store Saitama looking ass. Oof. He I... looks like a shitty adult character from Digimon. Oh my god, he does. Also, can I also just say, mm -hmm. both of these episodes are really good for just some really prime faces. Just some really good faces. All that. Just like some really good ones. Oh. Okay. Okay, those are pretty good. Hold hold on. Wait, we got screenshots. Uh, let me pull these both up. So we have one. Gonna... That's pretty good. <laughs> That's kind of a thing. It's like that for a good couple of frames. It's like, oh my god. Uh, and then we have 
That kid is fucked up, uh, bro. Yeah. Those eyes are in different directions. They gave him some shit in that hospital bed. It's... Mm. They gave that boy mo morphine. <laughs> they gave him morphine, chat. <laughs> morphine. Morphine. Huh. Oh, boy. So, we get to hear a little bit of Luna's backstory. Apparently, when she was a child, she was a dueling prodigy at the age of three. Yeah, insane. Uh, until, like, she did, did one fucking duel and then fell into a coma. Uh-huh. That happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, but it's okay, she woke up, and she started fucking going on about the Duel Monster Spirit World, the Nazca Lines, the fucking Crimson Dragon, all that shit. Yeah. And, uh, fucking then she just became amnesiatic about it. <laughs> there you but go. She, you know, she lost those memories. Amnesia as a trauma response is fair. I don't blame the kid for that. Really would have helped yeah. if she had remembered some of it, but oh well, it's fine. I don't blame her. Um, so this duel starts. Uh, she she summons out uh, Sunny Pixie. And then Frank drops Dimitri Rorschach. <laughs> Thank you, Shara. <laughs> Funny as fuck. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't expect hey, twelve hundred attack from that man, but you know. Yeah, and um, I... <laughs> I'm sorry, but did you just call Rorschach fuck Slenderman? It looks like Slenderman. Well, he's got something on his face, so he's not Slenderman. But uh, yeah, I, I do understand where you're coming from with that. Um, I mean, so... I get it, but like, damn, what an insult to the character. <laughs> what Slenderman's awesome. That explains so much, Bio. <laughs> I'm good. Um, so th this grown ass man uses a monster card to give this child the Rorschach test in the middle of a crowded dueling arena um, and and then uh, makes uh, a horrible hallucination of uh, you know uh, the thing like evil just devouring her pixie uh, and it's it, it would have fucked me up if I was a kid watching this, and I think this man should it, die. Uh, it specifically, like, in Luna's vision, turns into the pi the pixie, and then a fucked up and evil fucking hallucination of the pixie. And it... Yeah, it, it was... It, like, it got my attention for a minute, and then quickly the rest of the duel was like, oh boy, mm -hmm. this is gonna be a long exposition dump. It's just gonna be a lot, and it's gonna be tedious, and I just want this man to lose already. Yeah, it just so tuned out. Yeah. Something I, about the, the fairy world is, is getting taken over by darkness or something. And yeah, the evil. Save something, and I was just like, cool. I Oh, right. Cool. I wrote down a, a couple notes here. Uh, do we get two competent female duelists in one season? Is it finally happening? Uh, bro, you can't just watch children in their homes. That's predator shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. And bald with a beret. He should be double executed. Yes. Mm. So, fucking his his cards have these weird effects that allow him to like send a bunch of cards from the top of the deck and also know what's going to be on the top of the deck. I guess. Yeah. And uh, we we get to see this fucking season's little oomphy, little little scrunkly Karibon, yeah, who Karibon keeps is getting. Very good. Who in the dub man. gets gendered with a he, and I I want to say that in the sub probably gets gendered with a she. There's Curry Bond. For based reference. on the based on the eyelashes. That's oomph. Oh yeah. Love them, little guy. Uh, the tail makes me a little uncomfortable, but we're working around that. It's fine. Yeah, no, I'm I'm looking at it, and this is very funny. In uh in these dub episodes, Curry Bond keeps uh, getting referred to with he pronouns, and then. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, definitely she pronouns. That's very funny. It's apparently the female form of a Karibo. That's a little so, funny. So, apparently female Karibo's got that giant-ass rat tail. Weird. Okay. Um, yeah, so throughout the course of this duel, um, Frank um, sweet talks Luna into just gaslighting her into being in the spirit world, uh, makes her play a field spell, to kind of uh, reinforce the delusion. And, 
He sucks. Mm, it, it just kind of sucks. I'm I'm trying to find good ways to describe it, and it's just, this fucking sucks. Yeah. Here's um, a good way to describe it. Dude is like a fucking sexual predator, and I don't like it at all. That's a very He's good real way to describe it, yeah. Creepy, yeah. Now, the vibes here are just atrocious. Um, They're disgusting. And, uh... He, he then proceeds to hypnotize Luna. Yeah, right. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, it's, uh... It's not great. But damn, that energy dragon thick, boy! God dang! That, yeah, that weird energy dragon was kind of cool. It, um, it was kind of neat. I will give him that. I, again, I just can't help but wonder, like, what it's like to be in the stands of this fucking, of this world, and just, like, watch this child get hypnotized, and then just, like, this dude, this fucking already low energy duel became a no energy duel. Yeah, um, I'm just gonna flush the second edit uh, for this batch. Uh, thank you, Shora. <laughs> yeah, no, this was the one where Shora was rushing to get it done before we uh, before we started. And oh, uh, it's really good. It's a banger. It's so good. It's the icing on the cake of this episode. I think. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, yeah, so, so I behind the scenes, this was not the original fucking version of the edit. Oh, originally, I was going to take the scene from episode one where they're where fucking Pim and Charlie are talking in the foreground, and then you've got the dude Desmond in the background with the gun to his head. Oh my god, I was going to draw fucking like I was going to try and edit Desmond into Luna. And then Pim and Charlie into this dude and his weird energy dragon. That's awesome. It would have been great, but I think this is the simplicity of this is too fucking good. Yeah, no, this this just works for what it is. Um, and uh, it it distracts me a little bit from how fucking vile this entire duel feels because uh, d despite being like in this trance, Luna's still dueling. And, like, the the thing is, she's living the duel as if her spirits are, like, physically there with her. Uh, so, like, when the, what is it, uh, when Ido, the Supreme Magical Force, attacks, she, she, like, cowers because it's huge, it's a huge energy horse. It's sick as hell, but that's horrifying to a, a, a 10 or 11 year old kid. Oh, yeah. Scary as hell. Um... Uh, but she she ends up summoning a sunlight unicorn with horn in the unicorn, uh, which I think is the first time we've seen that horn be put on a real unicorn in the entire the entirety of the series, which is funny. Remember when horn in the unicorn was a feral imp equip card? That's funny. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> real funny to get flashbanged by horn of the fucking unicorn. Yeah. Um. And then the unicorn, when it's summoned, starts talking, and I don't like that, because it, like, beckons her further into the forest to remember, and I'm like, you know, the vibes here are not great. You really should stop doing that. This is, uh, this is not good. This, uh, two-parter just makes me uncomfortable. And then it continues, because that's episode 18. Now get ready for episode 19! Do you want more of this? Too bad. Here's more of this. Um. Yay! Luna's in the spirit Luna's in the spirit world. The spirit world's all fucked up and like drained of life and stuff. Falling yeah. apart. Also, there's a skeleton stuck in a rock. That's fucked up, bro. Someone get him out of there. Uh. Yeah. So apparently she promised to protect this world. And she doesn't remember that. So it's like, hmm, I don't. I don't know. Just like the Fae in our world, these Fae chose to trick a three-year-old child into a contract. Yeah, it's a little fucked up, because she was three. She was three I'm just saying, old. ancient fairy dragon's a little problematic. Uh, a little. <laughs> Try very problematic. Only a little bit. The, there's only one instance in this entire episode where I look at ancient fairy dragon and go, yes, thank you, you're an ally. Uh, but we'll get to that, because that's my edit. That's my only edit of this batch. Um... <laughs> You know, the duel, the duel continues. Somehow, uh, this kid is still able to duel through uh, the, the trauma she's enduring and being forced to confront. Uh, and he's, like, trying to goad 
Luna into describing what the the dual monster spirit world looks like. Uh, and you say, you say is backstage, and he goes, "Something is wrong with this kid. I need to go and help this child." You know, like a true yeah, hero, say. absolute yeah. king shit. Like He's such there. a good dude. He rules. Yeah, you say is awesome. Yeah. Also, at some point, they just said like. Oh, she was talking about how lonely she was, and in the sub, she just says, like, I forget that that's, like, Hitori Bochi. Is you how went, you say, oh like, God, I'm Bochy so lonely. Yeah, so I went, oh my god, Bochi the Rock! <laughs> <laughs> well, let's uh, not forget, uh, first off, the snake got really weird long arms. I don't like the snake. But also, Wadapon and Jerry Beans Man! Yeah, I'm happy to see them. Oomphies. Oomphies! Uh... Yeah, so they they lead this child to what used to be a nice river, riverbed. Uh, it was full of flowers and all that, uh, and it's fucked up now. And there's a giant stone slab, and on that slab is a fucked up and dried out ancient fairy dragon. So, ancient fairy dragon talks to Luna. And it's just like, yeah, no, you promised you would uh, look out for us, so you you didn't forget, right? Surely you didn't forget. How could you forget? Uh, and then we get a flashback of three year this three year old child being surrounded by funny little dual spirits like Curry Bon and Wadapon and all of them, uh, watching this world start to die, and just going, "I'll do whatever I can to help." And they they really took those words and bound her for life to this contract. You said you would help us. So that means you have to. I was I like was three. six. No, it's I was worse. four years old. Three years old. Ugh. Yeah. No, that's what makes this so much worse, is that this kid was three when this happened, and they're, like, insisting on holding her to it. Uh... Oh, yeah. Um, Angel Fairy Dragon tells her that um, this world is sustained... Uh, by, you know, uh, kindness and good intent, and uh, the, the world is falling apart because sickos want to get in and ruin it. Sicko the sickos and evil intent uh, and malice will corrupt the, the world of the dual spirits until it's just a husk of what it used to be. Um, and at first the dragon asks Luna to stay there, which she thinks about. Uh, but uh, it's it's revealed that uh, her brother was the tie that called her back from that place when she was you know three, uh, <laughs> and and she ended up leaving and eventually forgetting all about it. Uh, meanwhile, you say runs into this arena, calls out to this child, gets nothing, and is just like, "Damn, they look fucked up. What the hell is going on?" Uh, that, that's about it. Uh, Leo also falls into a, a, uh, not, not quite a coma, but Leo's unconscious in the stands, and everyone in the stands is freaking out about that. Uh, they, they rush him to the infirmary. It's fucking knocked the fuck out. Yeah. I wrote down in my notes, this is where Kanzaki Shiro shows up to tell her fight to survive. <laughs> you must fight in this signer game. Tatakayo. <laughs> God. Tatakayo. And I just linked the opening to Ryuki. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I mean, they they had to fuck up this child to get it to happen, but it happened. Uh, Luna's signer mark is glowing. It's a cool, like, hand and claws uh, of a dragon. Yeah. It's neat. I... I love that they that like no one stops you say from just walking onto the fucking arena. By the way, yeah, like they both get tranced the fuck up, and you say just walks out there like y'all, you fucking okay? No <laughs> one stops him. No one's commented. They're they're just like yeah, dude, you can go out there, fuck whatever. Yeah. Like, I don't want to go check. <laughs> so uh, now Frank is in the spirit world. Uh, he managed to break through somehow. I d don't ask me how. I don't know how the logistics of. I'm going to become this the god of works. the spirit world and use its power for myself. Everyone will know the name Frank. Dude, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what was going on in these episodes. Yeah, uh, these these two kind of sucked. They were very much the low point. Um, so Frank shows up in the spirit world and 
You know, he starts to ruin everything because he's an evil piece of shit. Uh, uh, as as things start to collapse, uh, Luna starts crying out for her brother. Um, the the same way she did the first time she was stuck here, and uh, you know, she sees his face in a puddle. It's very funny. Um, Tatakayo. And, uh, you know, uh, Luna made a promise to protect the dual spirits, so Leo promises that he will protect her, and then, you know, he, he pieces out of there. Which is very sweet, but it's also very funny that he's just like, yeah, yeah, no, I'll handle it. And then <laughs> just sort of, you know the gif of the guy who does the, the peace sign and then starts fading out of existence? Yeah. That's what Leo does right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she... She finds the strength to continue with the duel, and uh, in the dual spirit world, they're just going at it. She like manifests the dual disc again. And they're 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 still in the middle of this. Um, and after after some some shit happens, you know, because this duel's kind of just whatever. Uh, <laughs> ancient fairy dragon. The fucked up and dead ancient fairy dragon from the rock off to the side here grabs Frank, uh, who is laughing like a an absolute psycho, and Luna Luna begs ancient fairy dragon not to kill him. Where I'm going, yes, please kill him, end him. He he's earned it. He deserves it. He doesn't don't, don't let him walk away from this. Uh, and she ends up stopping it uh, by taking out both of their life points at the same time using uh, using a spell card, and then they they managed to reawaken in the real world. But not before I could make this fucking edit. <laughs> Damn, Age of Fairy Dragon got a hand. <laughs> it's Love so true. I yeah. love that one meme where it's like, ah, I'm going to post my, my uh, whatever video after i beat this guy's ass he's like damn i'm not posting that that was yeah, embarrassing yeah bro i got my ass beat i'm not posting that <laughs> i love that it's such a good sequence of tweets um yeah so they both wake up now that the duel is over uh you say carries luna off the stage because she's exhausted because she's 11 and she just went through the horrors you know uh and then in the infirmary leo wakes up and he's fine and he's just like yeah whatever i i don't i don't know shit dude I'm just vibing. Well, you say carries her off stage for a few minutes, and then she just jumps down like, yeah, no, fuck you, I can walk. <laughs> Which, you know... Because she, yeah. she gotta be cool. She gotta try and be cool. Yeah. I like the little leap she did out of his arms. I respect it. I really hope that the, the women in this series get to be really fucking cool a lot. I hope so too, man. History has taught us that we shouldn't be hoping for that, but I still hope for it. Yeah. Well, I'm praying. I, can, I can guarantee at minimum that Akiza definitely gets to be cool for a little bit. I fucking hope so. I really as fucking for, hope as, so. As for other female characters in this show, I, I can't I can't genuinely can't tell, but like fucking I, I wanna say that Leo and Luna will at least get a couple of good moments too, so like Yeah, we we got shit to look forward to, I think. I'll believe that until proven otherwise, yeah. That's fine. Alright, um, now that we're done talking about that shitty two-parter to end off our batch of episodes... Well, least... I don't know if I was ever shitty, but... Whoa. Well, it made me uncomfortable, so there's that. Uh, you least know what, Fair. favorite card and play. Least favorite. Uh, does anybody specifically want to go first? My least Actually. favorite play was, um... The girl getting... that All of that. Was yeah. just my least favorite play. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> uh, at least her card. If I had to choose one, the the ghost skull on fire was kind of look weird looking. He's goofy. Wow. He's goofy funny. If I had to pick one, I didn't really hate any cards. Uh, okay, fair. Maybe the Zippo lighter. <laughs> least favorite play is hypnosis. Yeah. Least favorite fucking card is probably symmetry Rorschach. I think it's stupid. I mean, it's not a it's not a bad concept. It's just you could have done more with the fucking design, dude. 
If they had turned, like, Rorschach inkblot tests into an archetype and just had various monsters with, like, the really common ones, that could have been sick. But no. <laughs> Psychotherapy as an archetype. <laughs> Honestly. No. Because you, you could have spell and trap cards that, like, you know, uh, fuck up your opponent's mental state <laughs> or give them psychosis or whatever. I tune my monsters into therapy dragon. <laughs> Uh, but I was like, why did it put me a monster? Oh. I was like, it tricks me into doing things. And it's just yeah. Do. yeah. Yeah. Um, my least favorite card, I'm probably also going to say Symmetry Rorschach, just because, yeah, I think it had potential, and then they just waste it, and they give it to this fucking creep um, who I never want to see again. Fuck that guy. And my least favorite play was uh, using hypnosis to traumatize this child. Hate that. Yeah. Uh, my least favorite card was Nitro Warrior because it's disgusting and I hate it. Okay. And my least favorite play was Torturing Curry Bond. And that is Curry also Bond. true. Curry Bond didn't deserve that. Among the list of Frank's unforgivable sins, Curry Bond torture is definitely up there. Now, favorite card play. Would you say that it was undergoing Curry Bondage? Jeez. My favorite Die. card is Black Rose Dragon. I think Black Rose Dragon is neat. I think he's cool as hell. My favorite play was uh, <laughs> during Yusei's uh, speed duel, taking advantage of the difference in their um, their speed counters to, uh, you know, just stealth play a card and then obliterate this guy. I always like when Yusei manages to do that in speed duels, so seeing it again, delightful. I think my favorite card was the... Karibon. Yeah, what do you say? Harvey, whatever you call it. Um, my least, uh, no, my favorite play, sorry, um, yeah, was, I think it was the first match where the guy, like, essentially built up his abilities so that anytime the kid did any move, he just lost 800 life points. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's fair. Jesus that was, that's pretty good, yeah. Uh, well, Chabria said my favorite card as, as his. Mm hmm. And I know that we don't really have a thing about not doing doubles, but fuck it. I'm going to say Jerry Beans, man, baby. That's he was there for a second. The goat returned to us briefly. My little fella. And favorite play? My favorite play was that cool uh, equip card uh, loop that Aki was doing. Understandable. Yeah. You all right? Black Rose Dragon is the favorite fucking card. I want. I I love that fucking card. It's so cool. Mm -hmm. One of my goals is to eventually get that as a ghost rare. Cause oh, like, I would love that. Oh, goddamn. Um, my favorite play is a hypothetical one that could have happened. My favorite play would have been Ancient Fairy Dragon eating that dude. Honestly, yeah. But since that didn't happen, fucking. <sighs> Man, I don't even know. Fucking, there's a lot of decent plays here. I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Akiza using the Mark of the Rose on on that mass fight, that mass swordsman dude. That was good. That was good. Akiza creating a simp in real time. <laughs> Akiza, Akiza demonstrating summoning. what she'll do to all the uh the female attracted viewers in ten to fifteen years. Akiza summoning Yuki. Yes, that is the play. Christ. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna con I'm gonna continue slandering this motherfucker on this podcast. It's great. All right. I mean, I mean, listen, we'll tattoo anyway. Too breathable. Uh... Twi <laughs> <laughs> you were saying, Shabria? Uh, next time on Millennium Mike Five Ds, we are covering episodes twenty through twenty-four. Do not be fooled by the numbers there. That is five more episodes. Whoa, three whole episodes. Stop it sounds like four to me, but stop that. Uh, and we are going to be doing that episode. The live recording will be June 29th. The pre recorded version will be up on the 30th. So, yeah. Um, that's the day of the next one. Mark your fucking calendars, everybody. Uh, <laughs> is there anything people would like to say before I take us to the outro read? No. Everyone, just remember that at all hours, you should be. I'm, I'm muting that. I'm not letting you all deal with that much longer than you have to. Don't worry. 
Thank you all so much for listening to the Millennium Microphone. It is still ridiculous to me to think that we are in our third series of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, we have so many episodes of this thing, and uh, the fact that you all uh, still come out regularly to listen, to support it, is mind-boggling. Uh, th- thank you all, genuinely. It's it's just... It, I can't believe it most days. Um, please remember that if you'd like to support the podcast, it does not have to be financial. Uh, if you enjoy the show and if you enjoy what we do, word of mouth, sharing it with people who you think would enjoy it, does a lot. Uh, and, you know, because it's still episode four, another friendly reminder that all of our live recordings have been pushed back from 2 p.m. Eastern on Saturdays to 7.30 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you're aware of that. (sighs) Until next time, we will see you next duel.